A pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Bronco Stadium here at Mustang High School as we get ready for the opening round of the 2019 playoffs. Tonight, it's the Mustang Broncos hosting the Jenks Trojans. And hi again, everybody. I'm Steve Marshall. Mike Ziggenhorn is alongside. We're excited to be here. It is week one of the high school football playoffs, and we got ourselves a pretty good matchup. Yeah, it's gold ball chasing time. Start of the new season for everybody. Slate is clean. You got a tradition-rich Jinx team. 31 straight playoff appearances against a Mustang team. First playoff appearance for them since 2016. All right, we've got some great feature players to check out this evening as well. First off for the visitors, the Jinx Trojans, and the guy to watch tonight is Will Cox. He can do it all for Jinx. He runs the ball. He catches passes. He can play quarterback, defensive back, linebacker. He's got 18 touchdowns on the year and better than 800 yards rushing. Mustang has one of their own to keep an eye on this evening. And, of course, that's going to be Kari Brown tonight. Kari Brown can do it all. They line him up in the slot. They throw the ball to him. They hand it off. He kind of helps this offense get rolling. 15 touchdowns, 800-plus yards rushing for him as well. Should be a great game tonight between Mustang and Jenks. It's the Broncos and it's the Trojans tonight on your Oklahoma Four Dealers Game of the Week. We'll take an opening timeout, come back with a kickoff. Stay with us, everybody. The Ford Game of the Week is being brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Visit your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers for the best deals on Ford's full line of vehicles. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Weoki Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of the Weoki Kick for Cash. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. Roller weight loss and advanced surgery. Your best you starts here. The Plaza at Town Square by McCaleb Holmes. Love where you live. And by Cox, bringing us closer. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers from leading financial firm J.D. Milberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call 800-805-9823. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Sentinel Security Life Insurance Company. Call 800-805-9823. That's 800-805-9823. Call now. Welcome back, everybody. And as you can see, we've got uh, teams clearing the field, taking the field. We are just about ready to go here tonight. Some fireworks in the background even as the Jenks Trojans visit the Mustang Broncos. It's the opening round of the 2019 high school football playoffs. And surprisingly enough, Mike Ziegenhorn, these guys have only met one time in postseason or one time overall yeah. in their history between the two. Postseason back in 2008, they squared off against each other. Jinx came out on top in that football game. So they are 1-0 in the series. And you look at Jinx and you think, man, first round of the playoffs, they are opening up on the road. When was the last time right. that happened? You got to go all the way back to 1991, Steve. They went on the road to Enid and lost 6 3 in overtime. That's how long it's been since Jinx finished third place in the district. And that district they were in? Union, Owasso, Jinx, Jeez. BA, Muskogee. Wow. What a powerhouse district that was back then. No question about that. Let's talk about keys to the game right now and find out what the coaches told us before the contest here and what it's going to take to get the victory here tonight. For Jinx, they got to channel that Legion of Doom defense. It was so popular for them back in the 90s and the early 2000s. They need to stop the rushing attack of Mustang, which leads us into ground and pound. That's what Mustang's going to do. They're really good at running the football. And then one and done, right? You either win or you're going home, you're going fishing, you're getting ready for winter sports. Either way, you've got to win tonight's football game to advance. The slate's been wiped clean. 
All right, we're about set to go. It'll be the Broncos kicking away to the Jenks Trojans. Broncos in their home red uniforms and the Trojans in their home or with their visiting whites with the maroon trim. The kick is in the air. It's on the way. It's going to sail all the way back to about the five yard line taken there by the Trojans. Coming up the middle and has lots of running room. Only two defenders back there to beat. Coming from behind, finally making the tackle, but not until he gets into Mustang territory and a nice return to start things for the Jenks Trojans. Jaden Patrick, nice run. There is a flag back at about the 27 yard line. Uh, plenty of room. Man, Steve, he didn't really get touched until he got past midfield. And now he is down, it looks like, uh, on a knee just across that midfield area, but this is probably going to come back. As we mentioned, the weather, as you get the call from the official, looked like an illegal block had taken place. And that moves the ball all the way back to the 17-yard line. Jinx had it in Mustang territory, and what a huge penalty that one is against the Trojans. So it'll be interesting to see how these two teams play each other once we get settled in and we get the injury and the penalty situation taken care of. Both teams like to run the football, and so a lot of times as you take a look at the offense for the Jenks Trojans, you can see uh, Nobles and R.C., Johnson, Crawley, Roberts, Adams, Elrod, Estes, Murphy, and Wilcox, the quarterback, Stephen Kittleman. What can you tell us about the QB? Well, he got hurt in week two against Bixby. Didn't play against Union. Didn't know if he was even going to come back this year. He has come back with a vengeance, thrown for nearly 2,000 yards on this season, and Jinx is in the playoffs for the 31st straight year. We're set to go. Kittleman in the shotgun formation. Two receivers to the top of your screen, out wide to the left. First play from scrimmage, handoff, left side. Running going to get out across the 20. The original line of scrimmage was about the 18-yard line, so a pickup of three or four on the play. And that'll bring up second down and seven. Here's the defense for the Mustang Broncos, as you see Corian Hayden, Gesheld also back there with Woodward, Granados, Jarman, Roland, White, Kravonic, Sylvester, Haddocks, and Keen on the season. 31 sacks, seven interceptions for this Mustang defense. Gained about four, close to five on the play. It'll bring up second down for the Trojans. Looking to pass, left side, ball is on time, and that's gonna be enough for a first down on the far side of the field. Complete over there to number 87, Bo Estes. He's a 6'2 senior, goes 200 pounds. Good looking throw there by Kittleman. Yeah, great job for Estes to get downfield, get past the first down marker. And Kittleman had thrown the ball before he had stopped and turned around, and it was right there in his hands. You know, you, when you think Jinx, you think they like to run the ball, which they do, but they actually throw the ball more yards than they do rushing the football. And there's Cox. Left side, Cox is going to get good yardage. And it looks like he's going to get enough for another first down. Just a good surge, good push by that offensive line. Cox following right behind them is able to get good yardage and another first down for the Trojans. You think, is Mustang going to be wide-eyed today, Steve, because they have been in the playoffs for three years, first off. Now you're playing Jinx. I mean, they, they've got that logo on their uniform. You know it's Jinx. Coach Blankenship said, you know what? I didn't even tell our team who we were playing this week. Obviously, tongue-in-cheek a little bit, but right. I didn't want to think about who are we playing. We're playing another team from the east side of the state tonight. Well, they do own a victory over Union this year, which would fall in that same category. They beat them back in the middle of the season, 33-21. As here's Cox once again, he's going to get out across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Still battling inside there. Well, he's such a patient runner, too. You see him just waited, waited, waited for his blocking, thinking he was going to go outside. He saw a hole and cut it right up inside, and he ends up getting seven yards on the carry. Opening drive of the night. Jenks has had no problem thus far. Taking away chunks here as Estes comes out wide to the right side. Kittleman. It's Cox Dunk again. In the backfield. Look at that. He's got some running room and he's going to get to the corner. Cox is going to be taken down not before he gets to about the 40-yard line in Mustang territory. 
There is a flag on the field back at about the 45, so we'll have to check that. And my guess is the way that Jenks is retreating and Mustang is celebrating a bit that this one's going to go against the Trojans. And another block at the back against Jenks. You see Ethan Rowland, the official, Evan Mikloff, John Livingston, Dusty Hutchison, Devin Jarrett, the crew, an east side crew, and they mixed it up a little bit. Not typical that the OSSA mixes up the crews in the first round. They usually keep them at home in their general vicinity and region, but this year they've mixed things up. Well, and those guys, too, they work as a team. They work together. And right. Some of these guys have worked together, you know, maybe five years, 10, 15, 20 years. You know, several uh, referees, and I'm sure you do, do too, that uh, speak highly of their crew, and they're, they're almost like a, you know, a kindred spirit. Second down, call it six as Kilman throws out of the backfield. Cox once again, and he's going to get first down yardage. Man. Just some good blocking. Nobody even touched him defensively until after he got past the first down mark. I just, I just love the way he runs the football, too, Steve. I mean, even on a pass, he's just so patient, and he knows. Like on the last run when there was a penalty, you saw him just kind of running, and as soon as he saw the crease, he kicked it into another gear. He did the same thing there. He knew where he needed to get and picked up enough yards for the first down. I saw Mustang last week against Moore really surrender a lot of yardage to the Moore Lions in that first half. Then they came out and made some adjustments. And right now, Jenks is running the ball at will. Here's a throw to the near side of the field. That's complete. So they mix it up again. This pass here to Justin Murphy, 6'4", senior wide receiver. Goes about 198. And that'll pick up close to another first down. Give him nine on the pass reception. Well, this is Jinx offensively. I mean, they'll run the ball at you, but when they need to throw a pass and get a play to get some positive yards, especially on first down, they can do it. Second and short, maybe a yard, if that. Handoff in the backfield, running room, first down yardage there on the carry, number four. That's Grant Lohr. He's a junior running back. That's going to be another first down for Grant Lohr. 177 yards rushing on the air, only 27 attempts. So they are really mixing it up on what has become a very time-consuming drive. Working on five minutes. This will tell you how old we are. His dad, Jason Lohr, played at Jinx. Wow. Back in the 90s, went on to play at Nebraska. So that <laughs> we covered him back then. Yeah. Now we're covering his kid. <laughs> That's the way it seems to go if you keep on plugging along. If you keep working long yeah, enough, I'm right? Just happy to still be here, <laughs> able to say that. Nice call. Wide open running by the 20. Nice open field tackle. But not before he gets all the way down to the 16 yard line and another first down for the Jenks Trojans. Joseph Sylvester came up from his safety position, defensive back, and made a nice play. I mean, Will Cox, that big, big hole right in the middle of the field on the draw, and nobody holding the linebacker position. And that's what made Sylvester have to come up. Check it out right here. Linebacker actually blitzed in, and that left Cox all alone with Sylvester, who was holding on for dear life. Trojans now first and 10 from the Broncos 16 yard line. Motion, jet sweep going to the left side, cuts it back into the middle of the line, gets to the 10 and then is hit hard, driven back. And a nice job defensively. Some of the first guys there for the Mustang Broncos. Number 28, Jacoby Johnson, along with number 11, leading tackler on the team is Liam Kravonik. Yeah, you'll be calling a lot of Kravonik tonight. You'll also say, Brayton Jarman's name on defense for the Broncos. They're already huffing and puffing on this first drive. And again, Jinx continues to move the ball and burn clock. So second down and let's call it four from the 10 yard line in Bronco territory. Kittleman handoff right side going to get down to the five, get another first down as they continue to pound the football and that's going to be another first down for the Trojans looking to my left to my stat man Andy Casey how many plays on this drive already Andy 10th play of the drive started back what a throw an 18 yard line yep 
after they had returned the opening kickoff past midfield. There was a penalty which pushed him back. Six and a half minute drive and counting. Trojans now first and goal from the six yard line in Mustang territory. Overload to the left side. Now motion coming to the near side. Handoff cocks up the middle, spins, fights forward, and he's probably going to get four yards when it looked like there wasn't much there. Well, he just he does not go down on first contact. And then you saw what he did. They had him at the line of scrimmage at the five, and they spun, spun him forward. He went forward another two or three yards. So now second and goal, line of scrimmage, the Mustang two-yard line. They're working on eight-minute drive here, Steve, to start the game. Kittleman under center this time. Fakes the pitch and hands it off, and Cox walks into the end zone for the touchdown, and the Trojans are on the board first. 12-play drive for Jinx to start things off. Seven minutes, 45 seconds off the clock. And you mentioned it a couple plays back. It seemed as though some of the Broncos were on the field defensively, hands on hips. As it had already taken its toll. Extra point attempt. Coming out of the hold of Jaden Patrick. Place kicker is number 39, Mac Haskin. And he is able to put it up and through. So the Jenks Trojans go on top on their first possession. Put seven on the board. They lead the Broncos 7-0 on your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Game of the week. We'll be back. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. The season is here. And it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now, for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford F-150, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It's the Black Friday event at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. You're watching. View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Back live here at Bronco Stadium. Youngsters enjoying the fun time here in the stands. They're trying to keep warm. That's what I would do <laughs> if I were them. Well, start doing it. We're, we're at the cold. Go ahead and start doing it. When you're at that age, though, that uh, cold weather just doesn't seem to bother you as much. 47 degrees is the current temperature. And it tells us that the humidity is 53%. Wind out in the southeast at 9. Feels like 43 degrees as the kick is in the air, taken at the 21-yard line. Broncos up the middle. Good running room and then a big hit right at about the 33. And that's where Mustang will put it in play with their first possession of the ball game as they find themselves trailing Jenks by a score of seven to nothing. And yes, it does feel like 43 degrees. It does. It's really not too bad. I mean, it was nice down on the field before the game. A little light breeze, but not bad. Perfect night for football. Here's a look at the offense for the Broncos. Williamson and Leeper, Bunch, King, Davis, Brown, Haddix, Duran, Dollar, Phillips, and the quarterback, Hayden Conrad. They've scored 37 plus points in five of their 10 games. Yeah, and in the last five games, they've averaged 42 points a game, and then we got a motion penalty right out of the gate for the Broncos. You're playing the Jenks Trojans. You just, you almost have to play a clean game or as close to clean as you possibly can because you know that they are built for postseason play. Jinx, on the other hand, last six games averaging 51 and a half points a game. So. Both these teams, their offenses have been clicking here at the tail end of the season. Good look at the surroundings here. Hand off right side, looking for some running room. It's Harvey Phillips. 
their leading rusher, 1,300 plus rushing yards on the season. Such an elusive player, and the Jinx defense is going to really have to be on its toes, not only with him, but with Kari Brown tonight. Here's a look at the defense for the Jinx Trojans with Jackson and Thurber, Brown, Vanoy, Pruitt, Ackerley, Tucker, Lohr, Hill, Patrick, and Stacy. And there you said, Mike, uh, held opponents to less than 14 points in five out of ten games. And unable to escape here, dropped for a loss on the play, and that's going to bring up third in about 13. Well, Jinx got in the backfield, and Phillips tried to get away for a split second, but there was too many uh, Trojan defenders there in his way and did not allow him to move and get a field. James Pruitt, the one who initially had him, and then finishing off Tyson Ward. Now third and long situation for Mustang. See what they call here on third down and 13 Conrad. Quick pass to the far side, complete, but it's going to be short of the necessary yardage for the first down, about three yards shy. So that'll bring up fourth down and three. They may go for it. They did this a couple of weeks ago when they played Owasso. They line up so fast that a lot of times they do this just with the hope that they're able to draw the defense offside. Jenks, a veteran ball club, used to play off action, doesn't go for it. He's got a quick kick now. And it's high and it's straight up in the air. Takes a bit of a Mustang bounce and is going to settle down at about the 35 yard line, and that's where the Trojans will get it. First and 10. A lot of fire on that Jinx sideline right now, Steve, being able to stop them defensively, force a three and out, and then force them to punt. And you mentioned Mustang's offense, they're, they're quick to the ball, quick to the line of scrimmage. If you're Jinx, you got to be ready. You're not going to have time to run your punt team, punt return team out there, especially on a situation like that. So for the Trojans, it was a 12-play scoring drive that put seven points on the board. For Mustang, it was a three-and-out situation. And now the Trojans have it again with their second possession here in this first quarter, leading it 7-0. Kittleman, the quarterback, throwing near side, pass is complete, spinning away from the first would-be tackler. It's Estes again, his second catch of the night. Kittleman on target with all of his throws. He has time to throw it. And all that works into the successful recipe for the Jenks Trojans. Well, and anytime you're a quarterback, if you're not under pressure, you are a lot more comfortable back there. At some point, Mustang is going to have to figure out a way to, you know, bring some pressure to him. But when you, how do you do it? You start doing it, and they run the ball, you're going to get caught, and Jinx is going to get a big play out of it. Estes comes out wide to the near side of the field. They send a couple receivers out, trips to the left. Kittleman, quick pass out of the backfield, dropped it. Incomplete pass. You don't see that out of Wilcox very often. In you know, week three, when Kittleman was hurt, Jinx played Union in the mid-first bank backyard bowl. Cox played quarterback. And you, you see him out there, you think, okay, they're going to run the Wildcat the whole game. He had a pretty good arm. Yeah. So he could do it all offensively for Jinx. So now third and short. See what they dial up here. Don't need a whole lot to get the first down to keep the drive alive and then restart the offense. Let's see what they play here. Motion, jet sweep going to the near side, cutting it back, getting first down yardage and into the secondary. Looking like he could go all the way. That's Griffin Forbes. Forbes has finally run out of bounds, but not before he gets down to the 12-yard line. And another big run for the Jenks Trojans. Griffin Forbes, 5'8", 172, and a junior. Showing some wheels there as he got to the left side and then brought it back to the right. Take a look. Well, Forbes has really picked up his game recently. Pretty good athlete. Rush for nearly 300 yards on the season on 29 carries. So he's averaging almost 10 yards a carry, Steve. He's got five touchdowns, and you can see why. He's kind of got a little Wilcox in him. I mean, he's looking for the hole, and then he takes off when he gets downfield and sees an opening. Referee called the timeout. They're talking with the Mustang coaching staff. Not sure about what. Well, talking to some of the folks with the Mustang athletic staff. I wonder if they got so many people on the sideline. Maybe they're trying to scoot people back. 
That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Yep, they are scooting. I didn't see any of them nick any tackles on the play, but nope. But maybe the official ran into somebody. Yeah, could be. Yeah, he's see he's officials holding his hands back like I need room over here, guys. <laughs> Lee Blankenship has got to dial up something defensively to slow this jinx offense now. First and ten from the 12 yard line in Bronco territory. Cox starts left and comes back towards the middle. Gets inside the 10 down to about the seven yard line. Picks up five. As we're winding down now, less than a minute to go here in this first quarter of play. An offensive line for Jinx averages nearly 270 pounds across the front. See what the play call is going to be here. They are opening some holes for their backs. From the seven yard line, pitch to the right. Cox runs it right back the opposite way and is met and going to be dropped for a loss on the play. And that very well may be the final play of this first quarter. Better job that time by the defensive front for Mustang, including Corian Hayden, who made the tackle number 90. And okay, you're right. There's eight seconds on the game clock. They are not going to snap the ball. All right, so the first quarter has come to a close. The Jenks Trojans, they lead 7-0, and they're knocking on the door. It's your Oklahoma Ford dealers game of the week here on Your View. We'll take that time out, come back, second quarter action just around the corner. Stay with us. Sports scene, we'll have Rick Corey, our good friend from KRMG and Tulsa football and union football, and Tony Daniels, the head football coach and athletic director at Edison. And Ryan Bush joins us as his ORU men's soccer team is off to the Summer League tournament and Matilda Mossman, the team women's basketball. Also, of course, our Remington Race Report. And don't miss this show. This may be my last on television. Applying for two high-profile jobs. You won't want to miss that announcement. All that's straight ahead on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Be sure to join us this week. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. See disclaimer for law firms. Attention all women who have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. If you or a loved one used talcum powder for routine feminine hygiene and later suffered from ovarian cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. The use of talc-based powders has been linked to ovarian cancer and many large men failed to properly warn women that the use of talcum powder could lead to ovarian cancer. If you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, or if a loved one even died from ovarian cancer, talcum powder may be to blame. Call right now. You may be owed significant compensation from the manufacturer. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney to determine if you may qualify. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-413-1356. That's 1-800-413-1356. Welcome back, everybody. We are at Bronco Stadium. Home fans trying to hang on here. Shanks fans on the far side of the field. We're looking at a third down and goal situation from the six. Kittleman dropping to throw. End zone, too tall, incomplete. Don't see any flags out there, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Will they go for it, or will they add the three points? Uh, it's, they'll, they'll add the three points. It's playoff time. You need to get points. You never know how many you're going to need, but well defended that time by the secondary of Mustang. Nobody was open, and really good job by Kittleman, too, to make sure either his guy was going to catch it or nobody was going to catch it. You want to make sure you have an opportunity to get points. Pesk van in for the field goal attempt. Blocked. It's blocked. It was nearly blocked and picked up, which would have been an easy touchdown apparently, but he fumbled it, lost it on the way, picked it back up. That's a big play as the Broncos do not give up any points when it looked as though the Trojans were about to go up by two touchdowns. Well, that brings some juice to the Mustang sideline after going three and out. Jinx holding them. Jinx had the fire. They march all the way down the field, unable to get points on the board, and a great special teams play by these Broncos. Let's see if we can find out exactly is that one or seven. It was Harvey Phillips. Phillips. 
running back proving his value on the special team side of things here. One more look kind of a late start there. Boy, if he is just able to pick that up with his wheels, he may have been able to go the whole way. But here we go now. Broncos with the football running play coming to the near side of the field. Short gain on the play. Just underway here in the second quarter of action. Zig is checking his score to lap and we'll have some updates on some of the other scores. How about that? More all over Edmund Santa Fe 20 to nothing in the early going. Union on top of Broken Arrow 14 7 no score Norman and Owasso the other games involving 6A teams here on night number one week number one of the 6A high school football playoffs complete pass to the near side getting out to about the 29 needs to get to about the 32 for the first down yardage they're still fighting on the field for the football before they give it up. William Haddix ran a nice route. Conrad got in the ball, and they're just a couple of yards short of the first down. They need to get the first right here, and they do with Phillips. Phillips, tough runner, will get it out to about the 35. That'll be a good five-yard gain, and the Broncos get to play, keep the football this time, which they needed to do. Actually, that was Kari Brown with the run that time. They rotate those two guys in. A little bit different running style for each of them, but two solid backs. Mustang literally, as soon as the play is over, their offensive linemen are back up and they are at the attention on the offensive line immediately. And the defense has got to be well aware of that. You can bet that Coach Riggs and his staff had them looking at that, working on that all week long as far as the Trojans are concerned. Pass to the near side, incomplete. Good job defensively by the Trojans. The Jinx defense didn't have to do any work in that first quarter. Mustang only ran four plays because the Jinx offense ran out the entire quarter. Uh, they held the ball seven minutes and 45 seconds the first time, and then they ran it out the last couple of minutes. So Mustang's already run more plays this quarter than they did the entire first quarter. Hard to believe. Third down 10. Broncos trying to keep the drive alive from their own 35. If you're Mustang, this is what you want to do. Move quick, keep Jinx defense on their toes. Pass play near side, complete caught, but only a five yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth and five. Cade Stacy came up and made the tackle for Jinx. Nice play. If he doesn't make that, it might be a first down for Mustang. Yeah, how about Santa Fe losing? Everybody was thinking, hey, they may have a yeah. chance. They go on the road, win at Jinx, win at Broken Arrow in the regular season this year. Number one seed in that district, in this district. Moore has some offensive firepower, but I didn't see that coming. Still a long way to go in that contest, as well as this one also. Here's the punt. It's going to take a good Mustang roll. And we'll go all the way down to about the 18 yard line. And that's where the Trojans will start with a 7 0 lead. 9 08 left to go here in the first quarter of play. It's the opening round of the playoffs of the Jenks Trojans. It's our score here 7 0. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind the scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. The season is here. And it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford Expedition plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It's the Black Friday event at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Welcome back, everybody. There's a look at the scoreboard. Well, it looks like they changed the score around on us there, Mr. Ziggenhorn, as it was actually Santa Fe 
It was up 20. Oh, somebody reported the score wrong, huh? They're fired. <laughs> you get on top of Broken Arrow, 14-7 in that contest. And Norman and Owasso scoreless thus far. Trojans with the football over the middle pass, complete. Somehow hanging on. That's a great job there. Estes again. By Estes. Because as soon as he caught it, he paid the price. But was able to hang on. Those guys that just can hang on no matter how hard that they are hit. Here's a look at the play. Yeah, he just got in between the linebackers in the secondary and able to make the catch. New set of downs, first down from 35, handoff in the back. Wow. That's Cox. Cox just continues to run. 11 yard run. He was hit and had someone wrapped around his waist and spun away from that defender and got 11 yards out of it. Cox putting them some big numbers here in the early going. 882 yards on the season, 6.3 yards per attempt with 18 touchdowns. 66 yards rushing so far for Cox here in this contest. Kittleman dropping the throw, looking, has time, throws, bullet down the middle. Receiver and the defender look like they get their feet tangled up. Receiver goes down. That's Estes once again. Pass goes incomplete. Kind of hard to call a foul on either entity yeah, at that point. Their feet did get tangled up a little bit. Estes, the favorite target this season, 661 yards receiving, and you can see why. I mean, just a big body player, a uh, guy who gets between gets himself in between the defender and the football so he can make the catch. 6'2", 200 pounds. Second down and 10 for the Trojans. From their own 45-yard line. Handoff, Cox right side. Again, showing that patience, just waiting for the hole to develop. Only gets about two on the carry, and that'll bring up third and eight. Sometimes just nothing there. It's yeah. going to happen once in a while. Right. That credit Mustang defensive front. Jinx had been successful running the football. They were able to fill the gaps that time, and there was really nowhere for him to go. He would Keith Riggs and his staff dial up for a third date. Justin Murphy, receiver to the right side. Here they come. Looking. Flushed out of the pocket, trying to run, and he'll get first down yardage. That's Kittleman, no flags on the play. Then he is taken and driven out of bounds on the far side. Big hit there by the Mustang defense. Kravonik once again, but not before. It's another first down. Is he, Jenks is he a wrestler, Andy? He's got to be a wrestler. <laughs> Give him two points for that one. And Kittleman, great, but he saw the blitz. Here comes the blitz. I'm stepping out of the way. There's nobody out there. Plenty of room. He's pointing downfield. Give me a block. Help me out. And then, boom, look at the takedown. Yeah, I like that a lot. Nice. Well, you know. Love when guys wrap up. Wrestlers make the best football players. Absolutely. Because they know how to wrap up and tackle somebody. New set of downs, first and 10 from the Broncos' 36-yard line. Cox again, left side, not much there this time. Nice job defensively. And the clock just continues to roll here at record pace. We're already less than six minutes half left to go here in this second quarter of play. Owasso has scored against Norman. Looks like their extra point is pending. Still waiting to get clarification on that Moore Santa Fe score. We've seen both teams winning by a couple of touchdowns. Winning 20 to 7. <laughs> and oh, Ethan Rowland. Official telling him to turn the music off. Hmm. I hadn't seen that signal, but I thought that's what it might yeah, be. He's saying, he's saying cut it off. Kittleman drops the throw. Defensively, they read that at that time. I don't know if he got a hand on it exactly, but he was there to at least 
impede the path of the football. It goes incomplete. That'll bring up yep. a third and seven. And I don't know if that was intended for Estes or Elrod, but the defender stepped in front of Estes. The pass was too high for him. And then by the time he cleared those two, Elrod was in the clear, but un unable to come down with it. See, it right there, I don't, somebody ran the wrong route. Yeah. Because you had two, two receivers right in the same area. So third down and seven. From the Broncos, 33-yard line. Quick little square out to the left side. That's Estes again. He got it. Uh, he may be a yard short or right on, either that or he's right on top of it. And they did. They pointed forward. Boy, yeah, he, if he got it, he barely got it. He went in motion, Steve, and took off at the snap, went about six yards downfield, and then immediately did an out route. Take a look at the replay right here. There you see Kittleman say, you go, and here's the pass. Nice catch, right at the chains. Good tall target too. First and 10 for the Trojans. Motion near side, Kittleman, here comes the blitz. Screen pass is set up, but Mustang is all over that one and Cox has nowhere to go. He'll lose three or four in that play. Yeah, initially when he threw the ball, it looked like he had some good blocking in front of him. And by the time he turned around, the defense had run through the blocking and was there to make the tackle. Loss of two on the play will bring up second and 12. Here's a look at that good defense by the Broncos. Yeah, see there you take a look. He had the blockers, but the defenders just kind of brushed through. Kittleman the throw. Over the middle, crossing pattern is there. And again, nice defensive play. Maybe got a hand on it. And it goes incomplete. Number 28 there in the vicinity for the Mustang Broncos. And once again, that's Jacoby Johnson. We've called his name a few times tonight. He was stride for stride with Estes, who's become the favorite target again tonight for Kittleman. Laid the ball out in front. But I don't know if it was tipped or if he just was there enough to distract. Yeah, he might, I think he might have tipped that. Nice defense by the young man. Oh, I sure do like Estes as a target, though. He's one of those that looks a lot longer than his 6'2 frame, or the roster indicates. Kettleman again on third down, throws over the middle again. And looking, waiting to see if there's any flags on the play. I don't see any, and the pass is incomplete. Once again, some good defense there by the Broncos. Well, and here it is, fourth down. And you got to go for it, Ian James. You're at the 28-yard line. No need to punt from there. You're only going to, you know, it's only going to be an eight-yard difference, potentially. It's a nice defensive play. It's too far for a field goal attempt. And it's Johnson once again. Jenks had a field goal attempt blocked in their last possession. Now going for it on fourth and 12. Screen pass set up. There's no defenders anywhere to be found. And running into the end zone, Cox avoids two tacklers, gets in and scores. No flags on the play. How about that little screen pass set up? Great play call. No flags down. 28 yard touchdown. Cox was wide open, Steve, as you said. I think he turned expecting someone to be there, looked upfield, and all he saw was green grass. I think everybody was concentrating on Estes since he had become the primary target. And Cox able to sneak out of the backfield. Like you said, when he caught it, there was nobody in the vicinity. And yes, I do know it's turf. I say green grass, but that's all that was in front of him. It was green. I'm on the same page. With you. <laughs> you knew what I meant, that's didn't right. you? Extra point attempt. Snap back. Fall down. Kick is up and good. And the Trojans convert on fourth down. And now they lead it by a score of 14-0. 441 left to go here in the first half of play. Trojans on top of the Broncos. We'll be back. If you want to do a yacht, and if you want to take a bath, you just fill up the tub, not a swimming pool. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why pay for more than you need? For as low as $20 a month, you can get top text and data from Consumer Cellular with no contract and connections on the nation's largest wireless networks. It's easy to switch. Activation is free. And if you like, you can even keep your phone and number. You'll also receive award-winning customer support. Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service seven 
seven times in a row. And you get a simple, easy to understand bill with no surprises. Plus, they've been an approved AARP provider for over 10 years, so members get exclusive discounts. Start saving with Consumer Cellular. You can get talk, text, and data for as low as $20 a month. Switch today. With our 30-day guarantee, it's 100% risk-free. Call 1-800-929-3602. Go online or find us at Target. Welcome back, everybody. There you see our score. The Jenks Trojans on top of the Mustang Broncos, 14-0. 441 left to go here in this first half of play. The Trojans have dominated the play, possessing the football for, I would have to guess, nearly 70, 80% of the time, scoring two touchdowns. Having a field goal attempt blocked, Mustang has had one drive where they put something together, got into the red zone, but unable to make anything happen, turned it over on downs. Broncos accepting the kickoff here, trying to get a nice return set up, and they'll get it out to about the 27-yard line before he's met by a bevy of tacklers still going and still blowing the whistle and finally ruled down. And the Broncos will get the football first and ten, trying to put some points on the board here before halftime. Not a bad night weather-wise when you're talking about the third weekend in the month of November. Conrad, handoff. Running room and lots of running room. Breaking into the secondary inside Jenks territory and finally run out of bounds. That is number seven, Harvey Phillips, the senior. Made a nice spin move. He got loose and runs it down all the way to the 40-yard line, first and 10 for the Broncos. Quick out pass caught. Four or five yards on that play as they hook up with Tristan Plumley. Peyton Conrad, the quarterback, trying to put something together for the homestanding Broncos. They'll give him four yards on the carry, make it three as they mark him out of bounds at the 37. Phillips on the running play, left side. They'll get across the 35 down to about the 33 yard line. Need to get to the 30 for the first down. Just under four minutes now left to go here in this first half. Are you Alyssa? Yeah. Mike. Oh, hi, Mike. Nice to nice meet you. Third down and short. And stopped in the backfield. Dropped for a loss. Good job defensively by the Trojans. Among those there first, number 20, Drake Vanoy, the 5'9 senior, had some help. And that'll bring up a fourth down now. Fourth down, let's call it four, for Mustang. Conrad barking the signals, trying to draw the Trojans offsides, get the easy first down. Doesn't like look like they're going to get it that way. Still 10 on the play clock. Conrad now with six will take the snap. Fakes the handoff, passes deflected over the middle. There is a flag that's out, however. The flag came out in the vicinity of where the ball was thrown. So they'll talk it over. And it's going to be holding against Mustang. That's the Klein, and that will bring up, or actually give Jinx the football with 3.02 to play. For the Jinx defense, Steve, literally they were held, and then they held the Mustang offense. Mustang's offense a little, looking a little bit better on that series. Got a big run from Phillips right out of the gate. And again, just the way they move the ball and how quick they are getting to the line of scrimmage makes a big difference for what they do. Here's the pass, and you can see it was deflected. Goes incomplete. So the Broncos got it all the way down to the 34-yard line, but that's as close as they were able to get it. And now the Trojans will see if they can do something with 3.02 remaining in the first half, leading at 14-0. Kittleman hands to Cox in the backfield. Again, his patient approach gets it out across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. He'll gain three on the carry. 
And the Trojans doing it really in kind of unspectacular fashion. Ground and pound. You talked about it as one of the keys to the games. Mike Ziegenhorn and they have been able to execute that to this point so far. Well, yeah, that that key was kind of intended more for Mustang than it was Jinx because the way Mustang runs the football so well. Second down and seven. Kittleman throws that quick square out once again. There's Estes and another first down for the Trojans. What has he got? What five catches here in the first half? Seems like it. Andy, how many catches for us this? Four for 34, sure seems like more than that. Yeah. But they've been big catches and... He's definitely targeted, targeted him more than any of his other receivers, that's for sure. He did not stop the clock, did not get out of bounds, they rule, so the clock is running and now it's under a minute and 50 seconds left to go here before halftime. And off Cox across midfield into Mustang territory. Checking the timeout situation. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. And if you're Jinx, you want to get points on this drive, Steve, because they got the ball to start the game. Mustang will get it to start the second half. Cox is going to the sidelines. Take a bit of a breather. He's been busy. We'll check all the stats and the highlights during our halftime show here tonight. Second and short. Pass over the middle. Wide open is Estes. And he's running forever. Gets the block. Actually, it's number 23. And that is Murphy, Justin Murphy, who slipped out of the backfield, makes the reception and takes it all the way in for the touchdown for the Jenks Trojans. Well, Mustang blitzed and Jinx made him play. The two defenders who were supposed to be in that area for covering Murphy for the quarterback, Jinx picked it up and a big play right before the end of the half. With just 55 seconds remaining before halftime, Murphy slipped out of the backfield, and as Zig said, there was nobody around him. And it was easy running the rest of the way. He had to make a move or two once he got inside the 10-yard line, but Mike, uh, the flash Ziggenhorn could have run that one in, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'd still be running and not in the end zone yet. <laughs> Extra point is good, and so the Trojans, a very commanding first half of play as they are now on top 21. Nothing. Let's take another look at that play as Kittleman Drops it off. Murphy probably surprised to see there's nobody around him. He's inside the 20. Nobody's touched him, and nobody will touch him the entire run. Talk about an easy go and a great call and great execution by the Trojans. As now they are on top 21 to nothing with 55 seconds left to go. Left to go here in this first half of play. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, it'll be the Wioki Halftime Show. You can stay with us. We're going to talk to the coaches. The Mustang Cheer and Palm squads will perform, and we'll review the first half and go over the numbers. The Wioki Halftime Show begins here in just a few minutes, and we're also going to visit talk with Alyssa Danley, and she is the social media director for the Oklahoma Four Dealers. Looking forward to talking with her as well during our halftime intermission. And you can see some smiles on the coaches' faces on that far side on the Jenks sideline. I saw this Mustang team last week get far behind the Moore Lions, and then things completely flip flop in that second half, and Mustang came back and beat Moore. Of course, I know you high school football fans out there are saying, well, yeah, that's Moore, this is Jenks, and I get that. As Mustang on the return, looking to make something happen. They've really only threatened to score once, maybe twice, as they didn't get that close. Really, either time. A little scuffling going on after the play clears up. And now with 46 seconds left to go here. Well, Steve, if you're Jinx, that's exactly how you wanted 
the last two minutes of the first half to go. If you're Mustang, that's not what you wanted at all. You were probably hoping to at least hold Jinx, force him to punt, be down by 14 at the half, get the ball to set, start the second half. Now they're kind of in a desperation mode. 45 seconds here to go in the half. They got to get something going. Peyton Conrad, the quarterback, give in the backfield running play. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of sense of urgency there. As right now, Mustang with the home game, with the home field advantage. But Jenks, they've been there before, they've done that. And they have really nullified that advantage for the Broncos. Here's a complete pass as they're able to get the ball to William Haddix. That'll be a first down. Marketed about the 31 yard line with 19 seconds left to go before our halftime intermission. Trips to the left, top of your screen. Conrad looks that way, now looks down the middle of the field, wants to go deep, and the pass there is too far and incomplete. Really nowhere for him to throw the ball on that play, Steve. Good coverage by the Jinx secondary. Conrad, a senior quarterback, 6'6", 220. Now looking at a second and 10. And the handoff going to the right side. Not much there for Mr. Phillips. We talk about how big Conrad is. His dad played offensive line at OU, J.R. Conrad. He was, I think he was probably 6'6", close to 300, wasn't he? Yeah, he's a big guy. I see him every once in a while at the, uh, the coaches' clinics every so often. Haven't been able to make it up there myself for the last couple of years, but had the opportunity to visit with him a couple years back. This will probably be the last play of the first half. Your jinx, you want to make sure you don't give up any points and go into the locker room with that shutout and the three touchdown lead. They have played about as clean as a first half of football as you can possibly play. We'll find out the play differential, which at one time was astronomical. I'm sure it's evened out somewhat since then, but probably not a whole lot. Five seconds left, one final time, seemingly, for both teams to trot out there. Conrad from the shotgun, three-man front for the Jenks Trojans as they have five defensive backs, 30 yards from the line of scrimmage, but there is a flag that comes out before they get the snap off. They have to see what that's about. It was against Jenks. So a penalty against the Trojans will move the ball to the 41 yard line. They had 12 players out there. That's that's how they were going to stop them on that on this play. Well, maybe they've had that all half and nobody <laughs> nobody noticed. <laughs> they've got five players standing about 25 yards off the ball. Here's Phillips running play and wow he gets spun up in the air and dropped by Drake Vanoy and that is a very good ending for the way things went here in this first half for the Jenks Trojans as they dominate the Mustang Broncos and they go to their respective locker rooms here at halftime with Jenks on top of Mustang leading it by a score of 21 to nothing. We've got the Wioki halftime show coming up. Going to visit with the coaches as you see the Trojans making their way to the locker room. Van Oy, who made that nice play there, number 20. And what a great first half for the Trojans as uh, they have the lead right now on top by a score of 21 nothing. Back down on the field, let's go down to Mike Ziegenhorn. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Coach, it seemed like the team kind of got in a little bit of rhythm more in that second quarter offensively. Yeah, man, we did some good things. We just got to weather the storm right now. You know, we tell our, talk to our kids every week, tell them three bad things are going to happen in the game. Now that we know they're going to happen, we've just got to, we won't surprise us, doesn't have to crush us, just play the next play. We've got some things we got to get better at in the second half. We've got to be able to move the 
football a little bit better. And listen, our defense has actually played pretty well. Big plays are what's crushing us right now when uh, when a guy breaks a tackle. So we, we got to just fix that in the second half. We're going to come out and play hard again, I promise. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Steve, up to you. All right, thank you very much. Thanks to Lee Blankenship, the head coach for the Mustang Broncos here tonight. 21-0, the Jenks Trojans on top of the homestanding Broncos. It's your Oklahoma Four Dealers game of the week. And when we come back, we'll continue with our Weokie halftime show right here on your view. Stay with us. The Ford Game of the Week is being brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Visit your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers for the best deals on Ford's full line of vehicles. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Weoki Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of the Weoki Kick for Cash. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. Roller weight loss and advanced surgery. Your best you starts here. The Plaza at Town Square by McCaleb Holmes. Love where you live. And by Cox, bringing us closer. Are you currently you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-230-7194. Attention, if you've had a hernia surgery after 2006 and suffered from serious side effects such as infection, chronic pain, organ damage, mesh shrinkage, or mesh migration, you could be eligible for financial compensation. Call the law offices of Wright & Schulte right now at the number on your screen or visit meshjustice.com now. Ethicon, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, has withdrawn its Physio Mesh Flexible Composite Mesh from the market. Again, if you've had complications from your hernia surgery after 2006, you could be eligible for financial compensation. We can find out what type of devices were used in your surgery. Call the law offices of Wright & Schulte immediately at the number on your screen or visit meshjustice.com now. You deserve justice and the call is free. And there is no fee unless we win your case. Call now for your free case evaluation. Again, call the law offices of Wright & Schulte immediately at the number on your screen or visit meshjustice.com now. King Game Time on your view. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Come on in and discover the new Cox Solution Store. Experience a whole new level of in-home comfort. It's all right here at the Cox Solution Store. Discover, learn, and experience more. Welcome back, everybody. Your Ryoki Halftime Show is what we are engaged in right now as they make some special... Uh, Recognition for some of the other athletes and teams here at Mustang High School. We Oki Halftime Show gives us an opportunity, as you already saw, to talk with the head coaches. We've already talked with Lee Blankenship of Mustang. He guaranteed his kids will come out and play hard in this second half. You know that they will. And they have a halftime deficit to overcome right now, trailing the Jenks Trojans by a score of 21 to nothing. Let's go down to the field and talk to Mike Ziegenhorn once again. Zig? All right, thanks a lot, Steve. I'm here with Alyssa Danley, the social media manager for the Oklahoma Ford dealers. Appreciate you coming out on this beautiful Friday night, right? Yes, absolutely. A little cold, but I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy that Ford is a huge sponsor of what we do with high school sports here on Cox. Glad you're here tonight. Tell me what your role is and kind of what you've been doing the last few months as far as high school sports go. Absolutely. So I represent Oklahoma Ford dealers through social media and by attending a variety of events across Oklahoma. And so this fall in particular, I've been attending a variety of these Oklahoma high school football games and, you know, um, providing live coverage to the community. And you've traveled all around the state. You're based here in Oklahoma City, but you've gone to a lot of different places, haven't you? Yes, I've been anywhere from Tulsa to Claremore to 
some places that people probably haven't even heard of in Oklahoma. Just been all out and about because um, our main goal is just to connect with as much of the Oklahoma community as possible. So that's what I do. And the best way for people to do that is to get on social media and then you connect to, with them through the different social media sites. Absolutely, yes. You should follow along on Facebook and Instagram at Oklahoma Ford Dealers and Twitter at OK Ford Dealers to see the variety of events that we go to and just to keep up to date with what Oklahoma Ford Dealers is doing to support the Oklahoma community. Is there a special hashtag that you want people to use when they use maybe Instagram or Twitter? Yes. Absolutely. Hashtag OK Ford. As then, easy as that. Now, we're in the best time of year for high school football. It's the playoffs. This is week one. We've got about three or four weeks, but then after that, you're going to continue to travel around the state to different events, aren't you? Yes. We go to, um, I attend probably about anywhere from five to seven events per month across the state um, just to get as much of a variety of content and live coverage for the Oklahoma community. A wider audience of people who can relate to the variety of amazing things that are going on in Oklahoma. Alyssa, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, Alyssa Danley, the social media manager for the Oklahoma Ford dealers. And Steve, up to you. They've been a longtime sponsor of high school athletics here in Oklahoma. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate them and what they do for us and for everybody else to help promote sports. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody like your Oklahoma Ford dealers as they are bringing it home and allowing us to help bring all the attention to these fine young athletes on all the different fields of sports activities and beyond. We'll take a time out. We'll continue with the Weoki Halftime. Hello there. At Myers, we do a television show called The Verdict. We try to bring you good guests with good information so that after you've watched our show, you know more than you did before you tuned in. So please tune in. Topics from all over Oklahoma. You can see it on Your View Oklahoma's YouTube channel and also on Your View Channel 3. Join us on The Verdict. I hope you'll see us and as we learn more about Oklahoma and all of the wonderful things going on in our state. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. 10 years ago, I invented my pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Call or go to mypillow.com now. Use this promo code, and Mike will give you a second my pillow absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. The bladder control aisle. You won't shop here again. Your private business is your own. The constant struggle is over. Now there's a better way. It's HDIS. We home deliver bladder control products. We understand how you feel. For over 25 years, we've home delivered to many of the 20 million Americans who deal with incontinence. We offer all brands. We pay shipping and use plain, unmarked boxes. If we can help you or someone you care for, call for your free product sample pack and $45 in money-saving coupons. Our counselors will help you choose the right product. And unlike stores, we're always in stock. You'll get what you need. Satisfaction guaranteed. HDIS, the better way. For your free sample pack with your free catalog, $45 in money-saving coupons and free product samples. Call 1-800-467-7608. That's 1-800-467-7608. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Welcome back, everybody, as we continue with our Weoki Halftime Show. We uh, have already talked with the coaches and visited with the social media director from your Oklahoma Ford dealers. And right now we are watching and let us join the Mustang, Palm, and Cheer Squad all performing here at halftime. Thank you. 
All right, nice performance there by the Mustang Palm and Cheer Squad. We're at the halftime intermission. Right now, the Jenks Trojans on top of the Broncos. They lead it 21 0 on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. We'll come back and continue with more of the Wioki Halftime Show. Do you use catheters? Are you using the catheter that's really best for you? Oh, yeah. For years, I'd been using one kind of catheter, and I never knew that there were other really great catheters available until Liberator sent me samples to try. If I had not tried the samples from Liberator, I might never have found the perfect catheter for me. Liberator Medical sent me a catheter that was easier for me to use right out of the package. Now that I've found the best catheter for me, it's made my life much easier. My catheters were completely paid for, not a dime out of my pocket. There are so many innovative catheters. Get the best catheter for you. Call Liberator Medical. Get your free catheter sample pack. Call 1-800-499-1367. That's 1-800-499-1367. Attention Juul users. If you are a young adult or the parent of a minor who used a Juul device and suffered serious health problems, including nicotine addiction, nicotine poisoning, seizures, stroke, heart or lung problems, multiple cavities, or mental health problems, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call the number on your screen or visit jewelhurt.com immediately for a free consultation. Jewel devices are highly addictive and were aggressively marketed to young people. Again, if you or a loved one used a Jewel device and suffered serious injury including nicotine addiction, nicotine poisoning, seizures, stroke, heart or lung problems, multiple cavities, or mental health problems, call the number on your screen or visit jewelhurt.com now for a free consultation. High school football in Oklahoma was bigger than ever. With record-setting crowds, legendary coaches, and national media attention, the Union Redskins were fiercely competitive, and their defense relied upon their undersized yet tenacious defensive end, Chris Barnes. Sotai dotting the eye, and this is Sotai. Nowhere to go, he reverses his field. Tackled in the backfield. A huge play for Union. That's Chris Barnes. I can't stand to dog any play. I mean, I've got pretty good athletic ability. The 6'3", 215-pound Barnes had a nose for the football and was the ultimate team player. In his senior season, he had 10 sacks and made the All-State team under head coach Bill Blankenship. That, that was a very special, um, very special team. Anybody who's played for Bill Blankenship knows what I'm talking about. We won as a team and we lost as a team. Um, so really taking that, that mindset through my life has been uh, really good at not focusing so much on myself. Besides the values and memories he gained from his high school playing days, Barnes was forever impacted by some of the injuries he sustained. But those injuries helped guide him to find his true passion and meaning in life. I mean, everybody who plays football long enough pretty much gets injured, but I had a really bad hip flexor injury um, that had me limping for almost a month. And that's how I met my mentor, Dr. Michael Peterson, who in five minutes was able to release that hip and I was able to sprint within moments where before that I could barely walk. Uh, and in that moment, I knew I wanted to be a chiropractor. Despite the injuries and pain, Barnes still pursued his dream of playing college football. After two years at Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College, Barnes walked on to the University of Tulsa football team in 2004 to realize his dream, but the injuries just kept mounting for Chris. Chris was a, the consummate team player, a guy that wanted to do whatever he could to help the team win a game. By the time I got to the University of Tulsa, I could barely wash my hair. I could barely, um, you know, push a garage door opener. At the end of his playing career, Barnes already knew that he wanted to be a chiropractor. He began his career interning for his mentor, Dr. Peterson in Tulsa, before attending the Cleveland Chiropractic College in Kansas City. I remember going, this is what I want to do. I, I know what it's like to be in pain. I want to know what it's like to help people on the other side of it. One of his patients ended up being someone who had helped Dr. Barnes deeply in the past, 
his former college coach, Steve Cragthorpe. I have some health challenges. I have Parkinson's, was diagnosed eight years ago, and I knew that Chris was a cutting edge guy. And so I actually just Googled Chris when I got back and was able to get a hold of him, and he's been tremendous with me, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a mental and emotional and spiritual standpoint. He's the consummate doctor. It's just an honor for me to be able to give him a small um, gesture of payback for how he treated me. Dr. Barnes lives in Tulsa and has four children, including one-year-old triplet boys. He owns his own chiropractic firm, Tensegrity Chiropractic, and believes that some changes may need to be made to football. There needs to be more research into exactly how um, bad a, a mind can be damaged. I don't know if I'll ever let them play football. <laughs> we'll cross that road when we get there. His job may be to heal the broken athletes like he once was, but Dr. Barnes still holds his playing career dear to his heart. I will be a Redskin for life. My children may not go there, but I will be a Redskin for life. Uh, that program uh, shaped so much of who I am uh, as an adult now and really honestly taught me how to be a team player. The games, the people, the memories. Welcome back, everybody. We are at halftime. It's the Wioki halftime show here on your Oklahoma Ford dealers game of the week. And the Jenks Trojans have the best of it. They lead Mustang by a score of 21 to nothing. We'll take a time out and come back. Get ready for second half action. This and it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now, for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford Ranger, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It's the Black Friday event at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Attention all timeshare owners. Were you a victim of a high pressure or dishonest timeshare sales agent? Were you misled and confused by what you were buying? Did the timeshare fail to deliver what you were promised? Do you feel that you overpaid and just won out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we can help. We're Timeshare Compliance, and every day we help hundreds of timeshare victims protect their rights, and we can help you too. Our team can legally terminate your timeshare agreement, ending the payments forever, saving you thousands. But you must act now. Call now for a free consultation. With one simple call, the professionals at Timeshare Compliance can legally terminate your timeshare agreement and help end your financial suffering. You could save thousands. So call now before another payment is due. Timeshare Compliance is A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. Don't wait. Call 800-865-0145. 800-865-0145. 800-865-0145. When you're hiring or looking for a great new job, Use our community job site, ericsjobs.com. We've helped hundreds of area employers connect with local, talented job seekers to fill positions of all kinds. Here's what some local employers are saying about our service. We have hired over 20 people from our postings. You have been an incredible resource for our company. With thousands of current local job seekers, you will find the people you need. ericsjobs.com. $25 job postings. You're watching. Interview. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yearview.com. And we're back. It's halftime. 21-0 jinx on top. It's the Wioki Halftime Show. Joined by Coach Keith Riggs. Coach, you couldn't have scripted that first half any better, could you? Well, it was a good first half on both sides of the football. Um, really pleased. You know, we've got to come out and match that same intensity and focus the second half, though. As you said, nobody writes stories on what happens in half number one. 24 minutes to go. How do you keep the guys focused? Well, I, I think they know what's at stake. We talked about it at halftime. We've got, again, you know, Mustang's a good football team. They can get back in this quickly if we, if we have any uh, letdown. So we've got to come out and play with the same intensity. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Steve, up to you. 
All right, thank you very much, Zig. It is your Wioki halftime show. And our score right now, the Jags Trojans, yeah, they had a great first half. Did you see some of the replays? We'll take a look at some of those highlights from that first half. Trojans on top of the Broncos. They lead it by a score of 21 to nothing. We'll take a timeout and be right back. to the end zone for a touchdown. Kittleman had a great first half of play. Here's a pass that he gets out to Murphy. Murphy's going to take it in and untucked into the end zone was wide open on that screen pass as he gets into the end zone and scores the touchdown. And of course, they also had some fine plays on the defensive side of things. Here's Mustang trying to get something going. Here's Harvey Phillips. Nice little spin move. He's able to get into the secondary probably the biggest play of that first half for the Broncos but again none of that resulting in any points for that first half of play take a look at some of the first half numbers rushing yards well in favor of the Trojans passing yards for that point as well so you had those two together 256 to about 84 yards 12 first downs they own the clock in that first half as well Kittleman with some nice numbers Cox 14 carries 81 yards Phillips did have the eight carries for 45 yards Conrad five of seven for 38 yards throwing the football so that's a look at your halftime stat brought to you by Wioki Federal Credit Union our score has the Jenks Trojans on top of the Mustang Broncos by a score of 21 nothing and let's take a look at some of the scores from across the state before we get ready to kick it off here in the second half as you see right there Santa Fe on top of Moore leading at 20 to 14 Norman and Owasso that's a one score game and so is Union and Broken Arrow so uh, as Mike Ziggenhorn rejoins us here in the broadcast tent tonight you know how you doing Zig you're not going to give me a chance to catch my breath are you? <laughs> there's some of the 682 scores Stillwater uh, everybody just expects it to be Stillwater and Bixby anything else would surprise I think everybody uh, those two teams seem to be well ahead of the other combatants the kickoff to start the second half goes into the end zone the Broncos will bring it out first and 10 from their own 20 yard line as they trail the Jenks Trojans by a score of 21 to nothing hey both those teams are good enough they could compete in 6A1. Yes. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And there might be a couple other ones as well. Yeah. Keys to the game. You told us about them early. What do you think so far? Hey, the Jinx Legion of Doom defense. I said it. They were going to have to channel them. I think they did with the first half shutout. Can they carry it over? Can Mustang get their ground game going? And again, one and done. You better win or you're going to winter sports real quick. There's the pass. It's deflected at the line of this line <laughs> of scrimmage. And a lineman caught it. It's actually an offensive lineman that came down with the football, number 58, coming away with the grab there, and that is Brevin Russell. First career reception, no doubt. <laughs> like to have that rolling to his right. Pass this time a little too tall, and that goes incomplete. Well, Your Mustang, you don't want to get out of what you're successful at. You know, you don't want to go, okay, we're down 21 nothing. We've got to change our whole offensive package. You don't want to do that. So you've still got to run the football. Very quickly now looking at a third down and 12. Jenks does well to try to get players off the field. Here's a pass going deep downfield. Got a receiver. He's got the pass. He's going to race to the end zone. One man to beat to the corner of the end zone and in for the touchdown. The Trojans, Tristan Plumley got behind the secondary, takes the pass, no flags in the play, and the Broncos are on the scoreboard. So what do I know? Why do I, I mean, you said run the ball. No, let's go ahead and throw it three straight times and get an 80-yard touchdown out of it. <laughs> Great throw by Conrad, right in stride to Plumley. And he had just one cured the football and he knew where he was headed. He was able to take it in for the touchdown. What a come out of the locker room with a bang if you're Mustang. And here you go. Scored more points in the first 40 seconds of the first half than of the second half than you did in the entire first half. The extra point is up and good. And the Broncos are on the scoreboard now trailing the Trojans as you take a look at the touchdown to Tristan Frumley. Right now, 21-7 is our score. Mustang trailing Jenks. Trojans get the football when we come back.
The season is here. And it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now, for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford F-150, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It's the Black Friday event at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 1-800-209-4389. That's 1-800-209-4389. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Welcome back, everybody. Well, the Mustang crowd is certainly livened up after a long touchdown reception. Hayden Conrad to Tristan Plumley, and just like that, all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a ball game. Well, that, on a cold night, that'll get you warm real quick. Yeah. You get the offense rolling, get a quick seven points to get back in this football game after pretty much the offense stagnant that entire first half, Steve, and a lot of that had to do with Jake's defense, but... Mustang comes out and I said, what are they going to do? They got to run the ball. That's what they're successful at. They throw three straight passes, complete two of them, one to an offensive lineman, and the other one went for an 80-yard touchdown. That's why you're up here with me and yeah, up there. And there exactly. Side what do I know? <laughs> All right. High, short kick. Going to be taken by Murphy at his own 35-yard line. Looks to get outside. Cannot. He'll return it to about the 38-yard line, and that's where the Trojans will put it in play. First and ten. Now let's see if their running game can continue to do what it did in that first half. And really, Mustang didn't have many answers. Fortunate to only give up the 21 points. We'll see what defensive adjustments were made during the break. Well, this is the way the first half went for Mustang. They ran four plays in the first quarter. That was it. Jinks held the ball. Mustangs run three plays here in the third quarter, and they got points on the board. So you're going to think, okay, if we can just run three plays every time and score, then we're going to get back in this game real quick. But they're going to have to figure out a way how to slow down Jinx offense. We'll see how that goes as we begin first possession of the half for the Trojans. Cox, Estes had huge first halves for the Jinx Trojans. First play, running play, right side as Cox will get about two yards on the carry. Not much there. Boy, you get to this time of the year and you get the playoff games on Friday night. You get your favorite college team playing on Saturday. The NFL on Sunday. Monday. Monday as well. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Can't get enough football. Not in the state of Oklahoma, anyway. Second down and eight for the Trojans. Motion to the near side. Kittleman. Looks off the receivers and then gets the pass out here on the near side. And that's caught. Complete and then run out of bounds is Will Cox. And boy, just when it looks like there's nothing there, he's still able to make something happen. Well, he wanted to follow Estes. He did a puck fake to get Estes open, and the defender did not bite. Watch him right here. There you go. Nope. Defender didn't bite. Throws out to his second outlet receiver, Will Cox, and let him do the rest. He is just so fast. You know, you look at him, he's not that quick, but yeah, he is. And he just turns on the Jets and gets to a different level real quick. Brandon Elrod, top of your screen, out to the wide right. Kittleman, handoff. Met in the backfield. Did not go out of bounds. How did, or did he not he? step out? They're not saying that he stepped out of bounds, or did he? No. There's no official back. Everybody's down in the end zone. How did he and not go out of bounds? 40-yard touchdown run, and he tip, must have tiptoed that sideline. Some of the Mustang coaches are pointing at their officials like, hey, why did we and it looked like some of the Mustang players stopped, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I stopped. <laughs> well, just like that, the Trojans answer right back. And another outstanding run by Will Cox. 
Extra point attempt. On the way to try to make it 28 to 7. Snap back, ball is down, kick is up and through. And we've played just two minutes of football here in the second half. And both teams have already scored touchdowns. Let's take a couple looks at this last play, Zig, and see if he did or did not go out of bounds. Hard to tell from right there. And, and that Mustang defender wow. thought he was out of bounds. It was Sylvester, and he didn't bother to try and push him or do anything. Well... Any momentum that Mustang had, as brief as it was, has been erased. You see Cox with the gold hair. Tradition jinx started way back in the 90s when they started winning all those state championships under their head coach, Alan Trimble. They're wanting a gold ball, so what do they do? They all dye their hair gold. become a tradition for the Trojans. Absolutely. Jinx has the second longest active streak of playoff appearances, 31. Kasha Hall up in Tulsa, sitting just ahead of 32 consecutive years for Kasha. They are on the road tonight at Shakota playing. Kickoff going to travel to the far left, right side of the field. Running all the way across, looking for a hole or some running room, but fighting his way just to get back to the 20-yard line. On the return there is number 18, and that is Mr. Plumley, who scored the touchdown not long ago. I can tell you, you can look at the goalpost that, you know, there's flags on there, the little, what do you call it, just whatever. It's not blowing down there. No, okay. We're up here in the last row of the press box, yep. or at the stadium. And you can feel there's probably an eight to 10 mile an hour yep. breeze down on the field. There is no wind at all. So it's probably five or six degrees warmer down in the field. So I may head down there a lot sooner <laughs> here in the second half, just so you know. Uh, it'd be the first time I volunteered to go down <laughs> to the sidelines. I know that. It's a little chilly out here on our outpost this evening, but happy to be here. Hopefully you're staying warm and our coverage is warming your hearts along with the <laughs> wonderful voice of Mr. Mike Ziggenhorn here this evening. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Conrad going deep down the left nice side. Ball. And a receiver. But it goes incomplete. And a good job defensively there by number 26, Kate Stacy. Great ball by Conrad. Just a better defensive play on the back end. Threw it out there. Want his receiver to run right underneath it. Didn't get really quite enough air underneath it, if you could say anything. It's a look, and boy, it was there, though. Pass near side is incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver here on the near side. And that's going to bring up a fourth down situation for the Broncos. Yeah, they're going to have to punt. They obviously made some type of adjustment in the locker room at the half offensively on that first series and Jinx comes back with some a counter on their own and they force a three and out here on their second series. Trojans there getting a look at Jaden Patrick number five. One of these teams moving on to play in the semifinals next week against either Moore or Edmund Santa Fe and kind of the rugby style kick that's become popular the last couple of years. Let's see where they say it went out of bounds. He's going to stop right near midfield and then walk it back to the Mustang 42 yard line first and 10 Trojans and you to say that there's a point in the game where Mustang has to have a stop. It's right here. Oh, the hit, the snap hit one of the up men, and then Corey sold in the fog. The punter thought about running it and then realized there was Jinx defenders coming at him, so he just got out of the way and kicked it. But yeah, one of the up men didn't get out of the way or got in the way too quick. Spotted at the 41-yard line. In the backfield also is Grant Lohr along with Kittleman. And a flag comes out. Looked like there might have been some early movement. And it was against Jinx. The 
really a pretty clean game by both teams. Not a lot of penalties. Five is the total so far, according to Mr. Casey. For both? That's pretty good. Yep. We've done games where there's been five on each team oh in the gosh. first quarter. <laughs> Did a couple this year that had 20 before the game was over with. Kittleman looking to throw. Finds a receiver, and that, of course, on the far side is complete. Nice grab there. That's Murphy again. Well, that's, that's hard to defend. Mustang had players in the area. Jesus just had three receivers out there. Then it's pick your poison. You're going to go for Kittleman, or are you going <laughs> to hang back and guard your receiver? And as soon as he took started to run, they kind of moved a little bit, and that opened things up for him to complete the pass and get a first uh, right near the first down mark. Murphy's had a couple of big plays already in the contest tonight. Long Wide pass open. downfield. There's Estes. He's up, and as you said, and he's got it in the oh, end zone. Oh, he it. dropped it. He didn't hang on. And it's called incomplete. Looked like he had it. He was wide open, no doubt about that. The way he's been catching the ball all night, I figured it was a given. Well, I'd like to see that again. I thought he had it, took two steps into the end zone, and then went down. There he is. He's got it. Strip. What a great play. Yeah. Stripped as they cross the goal line. Nice defensive play. Sylvester. That was a fabulous. I mean, that may be a game saving type play third and short Trojans gonna Cox. run it Cox has got it he's got first down yardage inside the 25 to about the 24 Boy, a huge hole on that right side nobody there for Mustang and great blocking up front by the Jinx offensive line and that Trojan offensive line has really gotten the job done all night long you know what I love, too, about what this officiating crew is doing, Steve? They are managing the game, moving the clock, moving the chains, getting things going. There's not a lot of wasted time and energy in between plays. So they get scored as the season goes on, so theoretically only the best groups of and teams of officials make it to postseason play as well as the teams themselves on the field. That pass is a little too tall, incomplete. Intended over there for Estes as he went up to make the signature OBJ <laughs> type catch. That would have been a tough catch to make. Unable to haul it in. Got the hand up there. You see Kittleman, he's got that brace on his left knee, and that's the one he heard in the Bixby game. Obviously, as I mentioned, the first half sat out the Union game, has played every game since. He's become a little bit more mobile as the season's gone along, but you can still see, even on that rollout, still not 100%. Quick Boy. pass and wide open over the middle once again. And fighting for the end zone and getting in for the touchdown. Easy does it there as Elrod. And again, it's that little screen pass off to the left side, and there was nobody there defensively for the Broncos. Well, there was two defenders out there for Mustang, but they both went to the inside receiver. And when Kittleman saw what they were doing, he flipped it to the outside receiver, who was Elrod. And again, he caught the ball and looked upfield and saw all green in front of him. Extra point attempt to try to make it 35-7. to on the way it clanks off of the upright and it's no good so with 751 left to go here in the third quarter the jinx trojans with a strong commanding lead they are on top of the mustang broncos 34 7 our score on your oklahoma four dealers game of the week we'll be back
Are you or a loved one between the ages of 50 to 80 years old? If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase. Your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing disease or illness. Don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out for free by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-915-6530. That's 1-800-915-6530. 1-800-915-6530. Welcome back, everybody. We're at Broncos Stadium here at Mustang High School. Broncos hosting the opening round, but right now it's not paying any dividends as the Jenks Trojans on the road for the first round playoffs, which I'm sure is something that with all of your background information, you know when the last time that happened, that they were on the road. But uh, in the first round, yeah, it'd be 91. 1991. Yeah, when they went to Eden. Here's the kickoff, little reverse. reverse. Mustang trying to make something happen. Looks like there's a flag out on the play. Nice return, going to get into Jenks territory. But there's a flag laying back there, I believe, at the 27 yard line. Oh, I see it now, yeah. Caught Jinx a little bit off guard. They had a man in position to make a play, and then you break a tackle, and it's going to end up being probably a block in the back or a hold against Mustang. So this will come back. Unfortunate for the Broncos. Ethan Rowland, the referee tonight. Very experienced officiating crew has done several of the 6A championship games. Often has officiated that mid first bank backyard bowl that they have every year at Chapman Stadium at TU between Jinx and Union. So the Broncos, after the penalty, will start this drive inside their own 20 yard line. Handoff to the left side. And lots of running room breaking into the secondary. There is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. So this may be coming back. Harvey Phillips with the long run. There was a huge hole on that left side. They ran a nice misdirection. Lined up Phillips on the right. Let's see what the man in the white hat has to say about all this. It looks like everybody's coming back. You can read his lips. He looked like number 74 had committed the infraction. So the flag at the 18 yard line push it all the way back even further than that. So it looked like a great return. You see lined up Phillips on the right. There's the block in the back right there. Yeah, and the hold. Yep. Can't do that. Conrad goes to his right. Phillips goes back to the left. So you got the defense flowing one way. You get it to Phillips. Great play call. Unfortunately, they had a penalty that negated the nice run and would have had the ball in deep into Jinx territory. Mustang got down so early, we've hardly even seen Brown and Phillips really carry the ball that much to try to get going here. And it's really gotten to the point where it's too late to, you know, try to get them established in the game. And another flag comes out. Three straight plays with flags. And it looks like it's going to be against Mustang. Andre Dollar was the receiver on that play. Clock has stopped. 7.19 left to go here in the third quarter. Rollins going to go talk to Keith Riggs and explain to him what the situation was, is. I think the pass was incomplete, wasn't it? 
Uh, yes, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Two old guys doing a game. Can't remember what just happened. Did you see what happened over there? <laughs> and uh, if that's the case, he's probably saying, well, do you want the penalty and back him up, or do you want to just say forget the down? You know, right. They played the down, it's incomplete, move on. So he must have caught it then. <laughs> Lightman downfield. But they're going to move him back. You see, officiating crew. All right, so here we go once again. They're saying it's first and 23, but it looks like it's a lot longer than that. right across the middle to the tight end just tipped away thrown a little bit behind his receiver and the scrimmage is the four they need to get to the 28 so it's, it's pretty accurate very quickly back to the line of scrimmage pass here is to the outside incomplete you kind of mentioned it in the first half a little bit, Steve. In a game like this, utmost importance, it's one and done. The whole slate's been wiped clean. You can't have penalties. You can't make mistakes. You know, you, you get a big play, and it comes back. And you try and do something else, and then you're backed up again. You're backed up again. And now you're four yards from your own end zone on a, a third and 23, they've got to get to the 27-yard line for a first, and you just can't be it and put yourself in that type of position. Not against a team like Jenks, especially. Pass to the far side. Incomplete. Big hit. And that's what Coach Blankenship talked about, too, to me right at the end of the half. It's like, hey, I told the guys mistakes were going to happen. Things are going to take place. You got to be able to adjust to them and move on and forget about it. And, you know, recover from that. And it looked like they were going to get that going, the momentum, right. and start of the second half. And now it's just kind of, it's gone back the other direction. So the pass incomplete was the big hit at the end of it as well. Sticks his shoulder into him. Good job by Jaden Patrick. So standing at the back of his own end zone trying to get it out of there. Kick is angled and takes a strong Mustang bounce and is going to roll dead right about midfield. And that's where the Trojans will put it in play with 6.51 left to go here in the third quarter. Hey, don't forget the drive for the gold ball continues next Friday in the Ford game of the week. You can check out yourview.com for the game and time of next week's telecast of playoff football. Watch the Ford game of the week next Friday on your view channel three. All kinds of different myriads of possibilities that could be coming your way. Could be 6A2, could be 5A. Carl Albert, of course, always there in the running for a state championship. If they had went unbeaten all the way through the semifinals this year, they would have broken the record for the longest winning streak among the large schools. Of course, that was ended when they were beaten by Piedmont earlier this year, but Carl Albert still very much alive and still a strong state champion contender. As the score is in 5A, Carl Albert over Duncan, 34 to nothing. Bishop Kelly on top of Collinsville, 20 to zip. Edison Prep leading Pryor, 34 to six. Noble over Woodward, 21 to seven. And Piedmont leading El Reno, 17-13. Some of the scores in class 5A. So Jenks football. And they already got a first down on a Wilcox run. And they'll keep it on the ground, keep the clock running. Cox breaks a tackle, gets to the outside. And he's smart enough to try to stay in bounds. They say he did. And so they'll continue to keep the clock running. Winner of this game will take on either Moore or Edmund Santa Fe next week in semifinals. There's a look at that last play. Just keeps fighting, keeps those legs churning. Play was designed to go right between the guard and the center on the left side, and Cox buried his head in there, bounced off the defender, and then kicked it out. 
Tittleman looking downfield. Wide open receiver. Touchdown. Trojans. No flags. And no question about that time when Estes was open. He was three or four steps ahead of the defender. And he wasn't going to catch him that time and risk having it stripped away as he went into the end zone. Kittleman put that thing right in stride on the money. Now a flag just came out. So some after the play extracurricular activity that the guys in the striped shirts didn't feel very good about. It seemed like that whole left side of the field had been emptied there. Good job offensively by making Mustangs see what they wanted them to see. And then Estes was just wide open down the middle. It's similar to a play they've run several times. He lines up on the right and just goes all the way across the field. Going to have an unsportsmanlike penalty against Jenks. That time he obviously got matched up with a defender who couldn't stay with him. Extra point attempt on the way. The kick is on its way. It is up and it is good with 552 remaining here in the third quarter. Trojans have taken well in hand this ball game here tonight and now lead it by a score of 41 to 7. As you take a look once again at that touchdown play. Kittleman's got all kinds of time, just waits for Estes to clear the secondary. And you can see how far he was in front of the secondary. And caught that one in stride. Here's another look from ground level coming at you. Good work by our camera crew. Dr. Holcox, your view crew, been out here all day getting things set up. Just got away from former Mustang coach Jeremy Dombeck, who was amongst the crowd down there. Spent a lot of time with Coach Dombeck during our high school TV show for 14 some odd years. He was there for a lot of that and had a lot of success during that time. So it was always a point to make a trip over to Mustang on Saturday mornings and afternoons to visit with the coach. Yeah, he just retired this last year. Yep. That's when Lee Blankenship came in. Blankenship had won a state championship at Beggs back in 2017, the 3A title. 3A title. Last year was the head coach in Bartlesville and then came over here and he's he's trying to infect the new culture here at Mustang. Starting with the, you know, the middle school and all the way down the line, they've had better participation uh, amongst the players. There's been a lot more energy and excitement within the whole community and he's, you know, he's wanting to turn things around. Uh, and you can see what they did, the success that they've had, and the, the wins that they had this year, seven and three, five and two in the district to finish second place. A big win on the road at Union midway through the season. First time they've ever done that. It's always good to see some of the coaches. Ran into Coach Lynn Hepner of Mustang, who I knew from both of our days way back in Alta's time. Here's the kickoff. Mustang trying to get outside and make something happen as the penalty previous was tacked on to the kickoff there. And so Mustang will get good field position at about midfield, maybe a little shy of that. Also got to see Adam Gaylor, who was the head coach here at Mustang, who's now an assistant over at Jenks. So I yep. haven't seen him in a, him in a while. <laughs> So right at midfield, Broncos with the football, handoff, Phillips up the middle. He could, he'll get about seven or eight. Yeah, you, you mentioned that a couple of plays ago. We haven't really seen no. a whole lot of uh, Brown, Kari Brown, who's real electric. You know, it's, I think just the nature of the game and the way things have gone, they haven't been able to get the ball in his hands much. Yeah, you, here's a running play that'll get a first down. But you'll probably look back and, and think, how come these guys didn't run the ball? And that's probably the reason that they lost. But there was, they didn't have time. They didn't get the opportunity really to run the football because they found themselves trailing so early in the contest. Here's Phillips again, left side, looking for some running room. He'll get taken down at about the 35, maybe the 34-yard line in Jenks territory. But he's just, 
He's a sneaky little runner, Steve. 5'10", 185 pounds. He's very elusive. Uh, he's quick. He makes some nice cuts, finds the opening. Pass to the left side, that's complete. That's first down yardage and then some. Getting inside the 10, perhaps the six yard line before knocked out of bounds on the far side. Nice run and toss there as they get the ball in the hands of number nine, Chris Doran. Here they go, they don't waste any time. First and goal, hit at about the one is helping. Scored. Shoulder pads are in, they say touchdown. And the Broncos answer back. They have not given up by any means. Nice drive by Mustang put together. As they get the touchdown and now trail at 41-13 with the extra point soon to come. That was Devin Martin, number 22. Quick, quick drive, five plays, 50 yards, minute 13. Extra point attempt. Soon to come and on the way it is up and it is good with 429 remaining in the third quarter. Broncos back on the scoreboard but still trail by a score of 41 to 14. Can I play coach again? Since sure. I was so yeah. good at doing it earlier in the quarter. Go ahead. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> if I'm Keith Riggs. I think I'm just pounding the ball. Yeah. Running the clock like they did in that first quarter. And it was a nice mix of pass for Jinx in that first quarter. As you see the, the completion here to Dorn to get him down inside the 10 yard line. And then the touchdown to Devin Martin to cap off the five play drive. He had three Jinx players hanging on him. He gets pounded into the end zone for the score. Nice touchdown run by that young man, but you got to run some clock. You're up 41 to 14. I mean, they're not in any danger, but look how quick Mustang scored. Yep. It took them, you know, a minute, 13 seconds to get points on the board. Yeah, the fourth quarter and what's left of the third together is still 16 and a half minutes of football to be played. That's a lot of football time. And you got to figure onside kick is coming here at some point in time. Beautiful facility here at Mustang High School. Built the new press box not too many years ago, the new gymnasium. They've added bleachers in the end zone for the school band to perform in. Here's the onside kick attempt, but it takes that hop where it goes right into the Jenks player's arms. He corrals it, and the Trojans have the football. Still a lot of football to be played, though. 428 remaining here in this third quarter of play. You see what Estes has done tonight. Five catches, 70 yards, and a touchdown. Big play receiver, no doubt about that. He's been fun to watch tonight. He's averaging 66 yards a game, so he's right now above his average. As Jinx goes into a 21 formation. See, what do I say? Come out and run the ball. What do they do? They pass up first down. Pass to Murphy, little play action pace, pass, little bootleg. That's nice big gain all the way into Mustang territory inside their 35 and finally taken down at about the 33 yard line. Murphy's also had a good night. He's got a touchdown reception as well. Steve. He's pointing to his leg, ankle, foot, something. Doesn't feel quite right, so he's going to take a little breather. Nice pass, as you can see, wide open. Boy, Kittleman's been on target most all night. Yes. Running play. Middle of the field, still on his feet. Finally taken down. Yeah, Griffin Forbes giving Cox a little bit of a breather. That's kind of what you want to do if you're Jinx now. Start running, get four or five yards of pop. As Cox checks back in. The 
Jinx. You just want to take your time because you know Mustang is going to go fast when they get the football. They're, they're going to waste a whole lot of clock. Hand off straight up the middle. Driving, getting first down yardage. Down to about the 22, 21 yard line. And the clock right now stopped as they'll move the chains for the first down. And then we'll continue to count it down there as again it's Griffin Forbes. Trojans break the huddle. Elrod wide to the right, top of your screen. Estes is the nearest to the sidelines here on the left side. Motion, Kittleman looking, flushed out of the pocket, quickly throws over the middle. Wow. Touchdown. Defender didn't look back in time. And that's going to be a touchdown for the Jenks Trojans. Estes again. 88. 88. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. 20. Two yard touchdown pass. Malachi Penland. How about that? What a cat. I mean, had a defender right in front of him. Kittleman just placed the ball in the perfect spot for him to make the catch. It almost looked like Kittleman changed that play at the line of scrimmage when he saw what the defense was. Didn't it to you? Yeah. Extra point attempt is hooked off to the left. No good. That's the only thing Jinx has not done well tonight. They've had a field goal blocked and they've missed two extra points. And if that's the case, you're usually in pretty good shape. Yes. So Unless it's a three point game. <laughs> so it's 13 to 10. That ends up being 13 to 8 or something like <laughs> right. that. Here's a look at the play again, and you Kittleman see, has just been so good. Yeah, you see him look toward the sidelines, and I think someone else may be recognized that one of the coaches signaled something into him because he changed the play because the back moved around. And then look at that pass. You couldn't have put it in a better spot. The defender had his back turned. And nice catch by Malachi Pinlin. Stops the clock, 226 left to go here in the third quarter. And you can see that the uh, big smiles coming from coaches' faces, teammates. Penland with that. Touchdown reception on the year. He had caught just five passes. Only one other touchdown before that one right there. Great time for the junior to get his first playoff touchdown. So the Trojans set to kick it off. High short kick going to be taken at about the 14 yard line. Trying to find a gap, a hole to run through, not really anywhere to go. And he's taken down at about the 21, perhaps, first and 10 for the Broncos. This has kind of gotten away from Mustang. It was 21 nothing jinx at the half. Mustang, first drive, second half. Third play of the half, 80 yard touchdown pass, 21 7. Looked like they were going to, you know, get some momentum, get in it. And then next thing you know, boom, right down the field goes Jinx. And it's pretty much been all Jinx since then. 26 second half points. Broncos with the football. Quick pass to the near side. Pass caught. And then pushed out of bounds. Short gain on the play. Line of scrimmage was the 21. Looks like he may have picked up five. Five or six yards, perhaps, on the play. Hayden Conrad, the quarterback, throws. That pass two complete, and that will be enough for a first down. This catch by Jordan McFadden. Just like that, in under 10 seconds, they're snapping the ball. Pass over the middle. Probably the first time I can remember one going over the middle that was complete. 
couple of those have been tipped earlier. Pass reception there made by number 16, Andre Dollar, the 6'6 junior or sophomore wide receiver. That pass complete and then quickly hammered, taken to the ground. Nice defensive play by the Trojans. That's Cade Stacy. Methodically, slowly moving the football down the field. Conrad looking for an open receiver, can't find one. He'll just throw this one away. This Mustang team has 31 seniors, Steve. Never won a championship in football. They've been close. They've never been able to get over the hump to get that gold ball. And of course, in 6A, it's been tough ever since 1996. Yeah. That gold ball's been stuck on the east side. Pass is intercepted. Lots of running room. It's Grant Lohr. Headed the other way. Lohr has to make one cutback, gets a block, gets into the end zone, and touchdown. Trojans add to their lead. I don't think Conrad saw him. Lohr kind of baited him, and he just stepped right in front of the pass. A pick six. Jinx is definitely on its way. Yeah, no doubt about that. Trojans are having the best of it here tonight at Mustang. Increasing that lead now into the Barry Switzer area when they hang half a hundred on you. Again, problems with the extra point attempt. They're gonna throw it, however, and it's pass is complete. No flags on the play, so they get the two-point conversion instead. Heads up play. Not sure what that discussion was about. But if, now if you're Keith Riggs, this is gonna give you something to work on. <laughs> yep. Okay, guys, there's three phases to this. So you see the snap was a little bit low. <laughs> that's when you that's when you yell fire 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 that means hey somebody run out and go to the end zone because we have a drop snap and Waylon Adams is the one who got the two-point conversion there you take a look back at lore who just stepped right in front of the pass and I don't think Conrad Conrad ever saw him and then it was just beat everybody else to the end zone at that point but as I was saying Keith Briggs is going to have something to talk to his team about. Hey, there's three phases. Offense was good. Kittleman's thrown five TD passes. Defense did a great job tonight. They forced, you know, turnovers and slowed Mustang down. You know, in a game like this, yeah, it doesn't matter. But two weeks from now, or a week from now, or three weeks from now, it may matter. Because this is already the quarterfinals in 6A. Next week will be the semis and then the state championship game, which is something we haven't even talked about. OSSA did a pretty cool thing yeah. this week, Steve. They're going to play all the state championship games in one location this year. Over at uh, UCO and nice facility there, of course. And centrally located. You know, maybe fans from the east side don't quite understand that, but, you know, there's been fans from the west side of the state. And a lot of times those smaller schools end up having their championships at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. But many times you and I have both seen it where the games were either at Stillwater or at Chapman Stadium. And if you're from out way west, that certainly does make it very difficult for the travel there. Well, they're going to do the 4A at 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon, December 6th. And then the 6A2 at 7 o'clock that night. And then on Saturday the 7th, 3A at 11 a.m., 5A at 3.30, and then in 6A at 8 o'clock. And then the next weekend, Class A and 2A on the 14th. Conrad, his Mustang is back on offense. Quick pass to the near side of the field is complete. And, I, you know, I like that they're doing that. They've, they've done it in Texas for years. Sure. Uh, you know, the last couple of years, it's been tough because they've had three championship games yeah. at the same time on a Friday night or a Saturday, and it's tough for people that maybe want to see or go to one or more of the games. I can remember 
calling a Friday night game and then two Saturday afternoon and then Saturday evening in Stillwater. Yeah, we used to do that. Boy, it's been, what, half a dozen years yeah, ago or at so? least. And then the next week you'd have the, what, A, 2A, and 3A games all set up the same way. So good call by David Jackson, Mike Whaley, and the rest of the guys at the OSSA to come up with that plan. Mustang, because they run that hurry up offense, will get another playoff at least here in this third quarter. Maybe two, depending upon the outcome of this one. Spinning running play into the defense. They got the first down, which does stop the clock. That may help them get one more playoff with eight seconds to go. They're or gonna... maybe not. Nope. And that will do it as we will head to the fourth quarter of play. The Jenks Trojans on top, leading it convincingly right now, 55 to 14. It's the opening round of the 6A playoffs right here on your view. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it. And folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Do you owe more than IRS? If so, you may qualify for the IRS Fresh Start program, so you won't have to make any payments to the IRS. That's right. If you qualify for the IRS Fresh Start program, you won't make any IRS payments once you are accepted. Once you're in the IRS Fresh Start program, the IRS will stop all harassing and threatening collection activities. Call Fidelity Tax Relief at 800-430-2910 to see if you qualify. 800-430-2910. And welcome back, everybody, as we get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Jenks Trojans on top of Mustang, leading it 55 to 14. As Zig said, early third quarter after it was 21 nothing at the intermission, Mustang came out, scored in their first possession, made it 21 seven. But ever since then, it's been pretty much in control for the Trojans. Here's a little pitch on the jet sweep. They get it in the hands of William Haddix. Haddix will pick up about six yards on the play out to the 46 yard line. Quick pass near side. That is complete. Tripped up on the play there is Chris Doran. So two plays. Mustang quickly moving the football down the field. Conrad wants to throw towards the outside. This one a little too tall and off to the right. Incomplete. Stop at the clock. 11:21 left to go in our contest here tonight. As the games go on, we'll try to feed some more scores your way from other games, not only in 6A but 6A2 and Class 5A as well. Pass over the middle is behind the intended receiver. Checking out the score to lap, and Owasso's rolling over Norman, 42-14. That's in the third quarter. Broken Arrow has taken the lead over Union, 28-24, about midway through the fourth. And according to this, Moore leads Santa Fe, 34-21. to That one also in the fourth quarter. So the winner of that game will face the winner of this game next week at a site to be determined. Yep. Santa Fe already defeated Jinx, so no, Jinx was probably hoping 
if they won tonight, maybe to get another opportunity to beat Santa Fe, they are going to have to make a comeback if that score is correct and holds up. More lines and Daniel Highshaw Jr., who is a quarterback in high school but committed as a running back to Kansas, is quite a talent. And uh, Les Miles, man, he's tearing it up recruiting here in Oklahoma, isn't he? <laughs> He really has. I mean, Kansas got away from it after Mangino left. And they really have not recruited Oklahoma no, kids. No. Less miles. Gavin Potters, one of their starting linebackers, was on that BA state championship last year. One of those kids who a state doubled as a linebacker for Jinx, I mean, for Broken Arrow, and helped lead them to their first state championship. And, this is the first time they've ever had a chance to defend a state championship in the playoffs. Low line drive punt taken right at the 30 yard line. Fair catch was called for. And that's where the Trojans will put it back in play. As we are just underway here in this fourth and final quarter. Well, that third quarter took a long time. There was a lot of points scored. We got through the first half in oh, about yeah. 50 minutes. <laughs> I think that third quarter took about 45 minutes. But they know we're cold up here. They need to run the ball, burn the clock, and start the bus. Or get us a space heater. Yeah. The cameramen are just shaking their heads. <laughs> yeah. So that we do this every week. That's true. They do a great job. And yeah, appreciate our crew, John Candy and the guys set a tent up for us out here. Put a nice table up. Got a little bit of wind protection. Best they could do. Yep. There we are, right there. <laughs> Andy Casey to our left. I'm hiding. <laughs> That's why they call me Blockhead. <laughs> Running play out the middle. Lowering his head and lowering the boom on the second down carry. He just won't go down. And he's not giving up the football either. It's Kobe Rogers. You got a, three or four different backs for Jinx. We've done the job and probably done seeing Will Cox for the night. Or if we do, it'll be very limited. Third down and three. Going downfield, nice defensive play. Getting a late hand up there to deflect the pass was Wesley Haddix. I mentioned about the 31 seniors they have at Mustang. We did the game here on senior night when they played Owasso, and they introduced all the seniors before the game. They were lined up goal line to goal line <laughs> with their parents and relatives and everybody out there. So they're going to they're gonna have to do a lot of rebuilding going yep. into next year. On the other side, Jake's very young, only 18 seniors. Started the season slow, going one and three. Running play, punting play. High kick takes a Jake's bounce and will stop dead right at the 28-yard line. We'll take a timeout. Nine and a half minutes left to go in this ball game. The Jenks Trojans leading the Mustang Broncos 55 to 14 on your Oklahoma Four Dealers Game of the Week. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind the scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Enjoy the best of Oklahoma high school football each week on your view. It's the Ford Game of the Week. Inside the 10-5, touchdown. What a run, what a wow. run. Ford fakes the handoff. 
but throws it to Waters, and Waters in for the Trojan touchdown. Catch all the action, excitement, and tradition of Oklahoma high school football. The Ford Game of the Week on Your View is brought to you in part by Weoki Federal Credit Union, celebrating 50 years of serving Oklahoma. Watching game time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Welcome back to Bronco Stadium here tonight. 55 to 14 is our score. Jenks Trojans on top.
Attention, if you're struggling with $10,000 or more in credit card debt, personal loans, collection accounts, or medical bills, it could take you decades to pay them off. Call National Debt Relief right now to see if you qualify for the Debt Reset Program. You could pay only a fraction of what you owe while you become debt-free in just 24 to 48 months. National Debt Relief is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. There are no upfront costs, and you could resolve your debt for a fraction of what you owe. Call 1-800-835-0151. When you're hiring or looking for a great new job, use our community job site, ericsjobs.com. We've helped hundreds of area employers connect with local, talented job seekers to fill positions of all kinds. Here's what some local employers are saying about our service. We have hired over 20 people from our postings. You have been an incredible resource for our company. With thousands of current local job seekers, you will find the people you need. ericsjobs.com, $25 job postings. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Back live at Bronco Stadium, along with Mike Ziggenhorn, I'm Steve Marshall, and the rest of the crew from Your View tonight. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed our telecast, webcast here this evening. We'll be back at you again next week. Make sure that you're checking out yourview.com. That's Y-U-R-V-I-E-W.com to find out exactly which game we'll be bringing your way. And, of course, check us out on social media, and you can find out that way as well. You can always hit me up at Steve R. Marshall and uh, tell us from where you are watching here this evening. It's always a great kick to find out grandparents, relatives, uh, deployed parents overseas watching the game because we're able to bring it to you through great sponsors like your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Onside kick attempt, penalty flag comes out. Looks like Mustang may have started that a little bit early. They were offside. You talk about what people watching this. One of the guys on our crew was talking before the game. He has a buddy that was out in San Diego. The Bixby game that we did last week was being replayed on Cox out in San Diego last week. Cool. <laughs> so somebody in San Diego was watching Bixby <laughs> Muskogee and probably going, where the heck is Bixby and Muskogee? What are those? <laughs> yeah, from where you and I both came from, high school football had some following. But right. Well, we played our games on Saturday. So did we. 1.30 Saturday yeah, afternoon. Saturday afternoon. High school football. We and didn't have anything on Friday night. Most times I didn't go because I was watching college games. Yeah, there you go. And the fact that we were really bad. <laughs> Here's the kickoff for the Mustang Broncos. Line drive type kick this time. That's a free ball. And quickly covered at about the 19-yard line. and That's where the... Jake's Trojans will put it in play as Mike Ziggenhorn is here and he'll check the scores for us. Oh, there's plenty of scores. This is the opening night. The, cha the chase for the gold ball. 6 a one Santa Fe. And the score I have is reverse of that. It's been reverse all night. Anyway, they're still playing. Born Santa Fe. This is the Jinx game. Owasso leads Norman and Union and Broken Arrow. About a minute to go in that one. Broken Arrow on top, 35 to 31. Good scores in Class 6A. You like that music, don't you? Here's 6A2. 6A2, Stillwater, they're going to move on. Muskogee has come back. There's about six minutes to go in that one. Vixby rolling, and Dell City on top of Booker T. And maybe we'll get some 5A your way a little bit later on. Meantime, running play for the Trojans. We'll get them out near the 28-yard line. We should talk about small schools, and you mentioned Cash Hall a little while ago. Heritage Hall, a big favorite in 3A. 4A really seems you've got Tuttle and Bethany who've been, they played the state championship last year. They're ranked number one and number two this year. There's plenty of teams, uh, really good teams in Class 4A. But I always get a kick out of those smaller schools, for the most part, out there in western Oklahoma where you have teams like Shattuck and... Uh, some of the other Laverne teams like that that are always buying for national or state championships. 
Keith Riggs giving some of his younger guys an opportunity. Colby Parsons now in at quarterback, sophomore for Jinx. So we're gonna try and run out the last six minutes here. This one definitely have it locked up, leading by 33. It's 55 to 22. Very deliberate in their ways now as the play clock just down to 10. Get the snap off with five seconds left. Throw here towards the near side is incomplete. Pass intended there for David Fonseca. And it's incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down with five and a half minutes remaining. So a punting situation for the Trojans. Line of scrimmage, their own 30 yard line. Kick is away. It's gonna stop dead right there at about the 45 yard line where the Broncos will put it in play first and 10. Well, you know what this last week was, Steve? Was, was. Well, I heard there's a little uh, commotion going on. Yeah, National Signing Day. Bryce Thompson, the number one ranked player high school basketball in the state. And son of our own Rod Thompson, who works with us, announced he was going to Kansas. There you see his sister Sydney was right next to him, mom Goldie, and then Rod was in the background. As Bryce made the announcement, had his, there's Rod with That's a awesome. big hug. Thanks to Nathan Thompson, also one of our fellow co-workers at Fox 23 for providing this video. And Conley Phipps, the head coach at Booker T. Of course, the Hornets, the defending champs in class 6A. And bang, bang, just like that. Mustang scores another touchdown. 55-yard touchdown pass as they get the ball there to Waylon Adams. That didn't take long, did it? Kind of cut short the Rod Thompson piece. And Rod, I just wanted, we had him on the radio a couple times during the whole process. And just a, a great, uh, you know, an honor that he's able to go to such a, a great university institution and uh, all the hard work and everything paid off. Congratulations to our man, Rod Thompson, and to his son, Bryce, and the whole family. As Mustang goes for two. And the best part of the ordeal, I mean, yeah, congratulations to Bryce. I mean, he's going to a blue blood program, yep. definitely. Rod played for Bill Self, uh, and Norm Roberts, who's an assistant there, but they pranked Bill Self. Did you hear about that? I don't think so. Yeah, they, were, they texted him, and Rod <laughs> sent him a text as we take another look at the touchdown. Receiver definitely by the defense, but Rod texted Bill Self the day before. It's like, man, I don't, something's going on, something's happened. I don't know what he's thinking now. <laughs> and they had Self convinced that Bryce was gonna go to Oklahoma State. Oh my. And then on the way to the signing that morning, on Tuesday morning, or when he announced it, he didn't sign till uh, third, Wednesday night or Thursday, Bryce called him and said, yeah, my dad wants me to call the coaches, tell them thanks for recruiting me, appreciate the opportunity and time, and I'm just calling you to let you know that I'm going to the University of Kansas. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so then him and Bryce tried to pull one over on the coach, and I, they had him going because the word was they were trying to call, the assistants yeah. were calling him, they weren't answering, the Thompsons weren't answering the phone. <laughs> Some of those old recruiting stories are hard to beat. Yep. <laughs> That's a good one there. And then you hear some of the ones about Barry Switzer and, you know, hiding guys out for a whole night so the other coaches can't find them. Looking in the trash can to see what kind of they, beverages they yeah, liked. And exactly. That's what he brought to the house. That's, that's great stuff. <laughs> well, here, the score has gotten a little more interesting. After the Mustang touch, touchdown, now 55-28. We might be witnessing the greatest comeback in the history of sports. You never know. Onside kick, you would think. Nope, just punches it down the field, away from the return man. And he's gonna step out of bounds at about the 12 or 13 yard line. Not much time goes off the clock and that's where the Trojans will have it. Let's see if they come back with any of their other frontline players to say, okay, we let you hang around enough and now let's get this thing over with. Yeah. 
Uh, Broken Arrow will get a chance to move on and defend their state title as they defeated Union 35-31. And then the score I'm getting, I know our score was back, but the score I'm getting in here is Moore's ahead of Santa Fe, 41-28. Wow. So what, which one do you think it is? I just don't know. Trying to think who might be at that game that I could text text and see what we come up with. All right, Trojans with the football leading still by 27. As we're into the five minute mark, running play towards the near side of the field. Full instruction to stay in bounds. They will keep the clock running even though he is knocked out of bounds. So 55 28. Zig says he's going to the sidelines, but I think he's just going to go inside and get warm. <laughs> I would. Drive home. <laughs> yeah, like I said, drive home. <laughs> you can call in your report from uh, Chandler. Running play up the middle. Big hole. That's a running room. That'll be a first down. Stop the clock, move the chains, and the Jenks Trojans will move on to take on the winner of that Moore Edmund Santa Fe game. And we'll try to verify the final report for you before we leave the air here tonight. It's been a good game between Moore and Edmund Santa Fe. Clock here winding down as we're under 340 left to go in our contest. My buddy Brad Heath had texted me and he said it's more on top 41. So thank you, Brad. That was just a little while ago. We've gotten conflicting scores back and forth. Second down and six coming up for the Trojans. Week one of the high school football playoffs. It's always fun to attend a game, go and watch the contests. Of course, now with the score to lap, you can sort of get a pretty good idea of who's won and who's lost, but it's always good to get inside your vehicle and listen to games or perhaps scoreboard shows that are wrapping up and sending scores your way. Now with 2.20 left to go in our contest, third down and two for the Trojans. As soon as he got past that line of scrimmage, he got nailed there. So that'll bring up 35 31 Broken Arrow final as they have moved on and advanced in the 6A playoffs. Now this year may be more, you know, you're so used to having the Jenks and the Union, but the last two years you've had the Owasso and the Broken Arrows claim state championships. And I don't know now that Broken Arrow is won and Union is out, Jenks looks like they're going to advance. Yeah. It's kind of where I was headed with that. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're just a little bit better than everybody else. And then the next group of the teams that are in the playoffs that are left are all pretty much even. Fourth down and nine situation right now for Jenks. They are in punt formation. Set to kick it away. It is away, high in the air. 
Fair catch called for, taken at the Jenks 48 yard line. Nice job there by Chris Duran with 159 remaining to go. And at this time now, let's take a look at the Cox play of the game. And this is going to be the quarterback, Kittleman. And he is going to find Mr. Murphy, number 23, Justin Murphy. Little screen pass. And he finds nobody out there on defense that wants to mess with him. And he's going to walk into the corner of the end zone. And a great job there. As you can see, he gets the block downfield, second block. And it's clear sailing from there as Murphy gets the end zone and the touchdown. That is your Cox play of the game. Conrad dropping the throw, and he's going to be sacked on the play. Corner blitz came in from number eight, Kobe Tucker. Tucker, the senior, able to catch Conrad in the backfield and drop him for a loss on the play. As fans head for the exits here from the Mustang sideline. Conrad, pass play here. This one's complete. Gets a lot of that yardage back. I think that was Jinx saying defensively, you're not going to score on us again. Yeah. <laughs> you blitz them on first down knowing they're going to pass. Third down and four. Conrad, pump fake, wants to go deep. Defender is there and the pass is tipped away incomplete and that'll bring up a fourth and four situation with 109 left to go in our ball game. So we know Broken Arrow moves on and Owasso is winning so those two will face off next week. Jinx obviously going to move on here. The only question mark is the Moore Santa Fe game. Yeah, and we got a text from uh, Brad Heath that said it was Moore winning that game. Moore is winning? Yep. Here's the pass on fourth down. Pass is complete. So they'll keep the drive alive. Yeah. It was 41 28 more. Wow. That'd be a, that's a four seed upsetting a one, Steve. Yeah. That, first round. That would be. Uh, Moore's got a lot of offensive talent. And they lost one of their top players, uh, Brandon Gerard. But again, the High Shaw youngster and some of the other players that they have have uh, put together a pretty good season. And if everything holds true, they put together a real good season. As you said, a, that would be a four beating a one. Pass there, looked like it was going to be intercepted. And then a flag is thrown at the end of the play. Not sure if we had a big collision there or what. And then we were talking about the parity in 6A1. I don't think there's nearly the parity in 6A2 because Bixby. You see Ethan rolling with the call and pass interference. Bixby and Stillwater, the two teams who scored off in the state championship last year, are head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. We've seen years in, in 6A2 where recently, not too long ago, Lawton was in the mix of things. Midwest City has been in the mix of things. Choctaw had a good team this year. They're not done yet. Running play here inside the 10 yard line. As the clock gets down to 24 seconds, you know they'd like to get into the end zone one more time, but will they be allowed to? Game clock down to 10. Very easy to just walk off the field right now, but Lee Blankenship and his Broncos, they wanted to score some more points. Instead, it's intercepted. Taken away near the goal line. Can he go to the distance? He's going to hit the deck and fall, losing his footing there. Intercepted by number eight, Kobe Tucker. And that will be the ball game as the Jenks Trojans have scored the victory here tonight by a final score of 55-28, although the referees are blowing whistles and telling everybody to stay to their sidelines. I don't know why it would be over. And the pass was clearly intercepted.
Trojans in victory tonight. 55-28 is our final score here tonight as the Jenks Trojans win it. We'll take a timeout, come back, and wrap it up here for you tonight from Bronco Stadium. Stay with us. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. And it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now, for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford Edge, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. It's the Black Friday event at your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Don't let unreliable internet leave your business lagging. Make the easy switch to Cox Business to get fast, reliable, fiber-fueled internet speeds. Protect your critical data with our security suite and around-the-clock network monitoring. All backed by our 24-7 business class support. Ask about adding our latest Wi-Fi technology to ensure wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Get the service you expect from the experts you deserve with Cox Business. Enjoy this limited time offer when you switch today. When you're hiring or looking for a great new job, use our community job site, ericsjobs.com. We've helped hundreds of area employers connect with local talented job seekers to fill positions of all kinds. Here's what some local employers are saying about our service. We have hired over 20 people from our postings. You have been an incredible resource for our company. With thousands of current local job seekers, you will find the people you need. ericsjobs.com, $25 job postings. You're watching Game Time on Your View. For more in-depth coverage of the top players around, recruiting updates, behind-the-scenes access, and more, check out yourview.com. Back in Mustang, Jinx wins it tonight, 55-28. You win and survive in advance. Keith Riggs joins us. We talked at the half. You said, okay, we played one good half. We've got to put two together, and you guys did that tonight. We did. We came out, and uh, the second half played really well in the third quarter. Really, really proud of our guys. And uh, bottom line is you want to go 1-0 and and move on this time of year. You think this team is not the position this season? They're starting to come together and playing a lot better? Well, we, we've seen uh, glimpses of that since day one, and, and they've uh, – just gotten better and better, put put a really good game together today. And how about your quarterback, Kittleman? First start as a, a starting quarterback, five touchdown passes. Yeah, he had an outstanding, had a great game last week, and uh, he followed that up with another really solid game. All right, coach, good luck next week. All right, thank you. All right, Keith Riggs, the head coach here at Jinx. 55-28 the final, Steve. All right, thank you very much, Zig. Thanks to Coach Riggs as well. Congratulations on the victory. And now a look at our player of the game. As we take a look at some of the video highlights from our contest here this evening, we saw the Jenks Trojans come away with the victory here this evening. And your player of the game is the quarterback. It's Mr. Kittleman. Here he is throwing the touchdown pass early on in the contest. As he, uh, there's a look at his numbers, 13 of 23, 236, five touchdowns on the night. And there's another one of his touchdowns there. Here's a pass here that Kittleman's going to roll, stop, and then plant and throw. And that one there is caught by number 88. That is Malachi Penland as he's able to get into the end zone for the touchdown. And once again, back on the field to Mr. Ziggenhorn. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Joined by Steven Kittleman. Play your forward player of the game. Congratulations. Uh, how does it feel get your first playoff victory as a starting quarterback? Uh, it feels great. Uh, coming into this game, you know, we just knew we had to stick to our game plan and execute. Uh, we did just that, so we're ready to move on and just keep focusing. Keep focusing. <laughs> Five touchdown passes for you tonight. Uh, Bo Estes is your favorite target, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, but we spread the ball a lot out, and um, you know the guys were just getting each other open, and that's what we talk about. You know, we play for each other, and they're just so fundamental in my O line, which is phenomenal tonight. You guys are trying to start to come together a little bit. One and three start to the season, and now you, do you feel like this team's on a roll a little bit? Yes, uh, we definitely have a turning point after the one and three start, and um, we just know how to fight through adversity, and we're just going to keep doing that, keep relying on each other, uh, and just take it week by week. Right, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much. All right, Stephen Kittleman, your 
player of the game, Steve. All right, thank you very much, Zay. Congratulations to Mr. Kittleman. Five touchdown passes on the night as his team wins at 55 to 28. All right, let's take a look at the highlights from this game, and we have plenty if we've got 83 points in the game, and this is Will Cox that finds the end zone. Short little run, great job on the offensive line to get him into the end zone rather easily. And then the little pass out here to Cox once again, makes a nice move, and he'll get into the end zone after a little dipsy do. 28 yards on that one for the score, and that made it 14-0. Here's the pass here, Justin Murphy. And Murphy will find the corner of the end zone. That's a 26-yard touchdown for the Jenks Trojans, and they go on top 21-0 at the half. But then Mustang came back, opening drive in the second half, and there you see Hayden Conrad are going up top to Tristan Plumley, and he's going to take it into the end zone. Long touchdown play there. Mustang for a while thought they could get back into it, but Wilcox walking the tightrope down the sidelines, and he'll go 40 yards for the touchdown. That made it 28 to 7. Broncos again, little pass there, throwing it out to Brandon Elrod. And Elrod, how many touchdowns they scored in that one little left corner of the end zone on the night? And then Bo Estes, who had a big night over the middle, wide open as he gets into the end zone for another touchdown for the Trojans as they again win it here tonight. Final score, 55-28. Here's Mustang. Chris Doran is going to, uh, Devin Martin rather, gets into the end zone for the touchdown for the uh, Broncos. And then Malachi Penland over the middle. Pass there is caught behind the defense into the end zone. And then the interception, that's Grant Lohr coming up with the interception. Checks to his left, checks to his right. Goes 53 yards on the return. The Oski pick six as he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And there's another look at it, different angle. And then Conrad once again for Mustang going up top, finding a receiver wide open in the end zone. That's Jordan McFadden for the touchdown for the Broncos. And your final scoreboard once again, 55-28, our final score here tonight as Jenks defeats the Mustang Broncos. The other scores from across, and they're all final. Owasso and Norman not final yet, although it's 49-14. You have to think that, that one is over. Broken Arrow has won. They have advanced. They took care of Union 35-31. Our game here tonight. And, of course, the Moore Lions knocking off the Edmund Santa Fe Wolves by a final score of 41-28. Final numbers on the night. You look at the rushing yards, the passing yards. The Jenks Trojans with 518 total yards. Passing yards, Mustang through for 341. A total of 440 yards on the night. Turnovers, inconsequential. In Hayden Conrad, 341 yards throwing the football tonight. And then Kittleman, of course, was your player of the game. But Will Cox with another big contest tonight. 21 carries, 152 yards as the Trojans win it once again by a final score of 55 to 28. Don't forget, next week, we'll have another game for you. Make sure that you check yourview.com for the game and the time of the OSSAA playoff. That's the Ford game of the week. That'll be next Friday, and we'll uh, let you know more about that, and that will do it here for this evening. Thanks to all the guys that made it all possible, the guys behind the scenes that you don't usually ever get a chance to see or hear from. Uh, they do a great job for us. Couldn't be, you know, work with a better group of guys, and we certainly do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you for my partner mike ziggenhorn i'm steve marshall we'll see you next week right here on your view as the state playoffs continue during high school football in the state of oklahoma so long everybody The Ford Game of the Week is being brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Visit your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers for the best deals on Ford's full line of vehicles. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Weoki Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of the Weoki Kick for Cash. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. Roller weight loss and advanced surgery. Your best you starts here. The Plaza at Town Square by McCaleb Holmes. Love where you live.